your content isn't even art, Jim. Your content isn't even artistic. You were picking on a guy weaker than you, weren't you, Jim? I might say it's because you're a loser who's playing to an audience of children. I'd like to join your posse, boys, but first I'm going to sing a little song. <laughs> <laughs> You have a bully cabal that you have created. A bully to cabal. Oh, bully cabal. <laughs> <laughs> Outer heaven. <laughs> what else would you call it? Uh, I'd call it the Swedish Why? Why? We spread to hug and love across the internet. Bullshit. You know that's not true. You know what you do. What about uh, name the bully? No. Name the bully for <laughs> Bully Hunter will help you. You you don't want to build a wall. Instead, you want to use you want to use a military approach and run sorties over drug cartels. Sure, and work with Mexico to rebuild its country. Yeah, sure. If we're gonna invest money into something, why not in making Mexico better so that a bunch of fucking people don't run away from that country into ours? Okay. <laughs> That's brilliant. This is like the ultimate condescending argument from somebody that's never have ever been in a shitty position in their entire life. Like I can't even believe you don't that know somebody. Who the fuck you're talking I don't. You can't. You can't either that or you lack zero empathy or have zero intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not part of your lying, doxing, harassing teenage fan club. I'm someone doing something in real life. And I have an army of mercenary children wreaking havoc on web forums from here to hell and back. You understand I'm a person, don't you? <laughs> you think white people act like this? White people are meant to be polite and respectful to one another, and you guys can't even act like white people. It's really, like, amazing to me. Jim, it's people like you that need to get a bullet to the head. Because you're promoting hatred, bigotry. Oh, oh, so is it bigotry against pedophiles? pedophiles? Pedophobia. It's pedophobia. Your low rent, low IQ trash. I was 100% right to call you a religious bigot. It's what you and your fans are. But as a white person who is male, you're never told that there's anything you can do. You have no idea what it's like to be told you're not supposed to do that. That's not the kind of job for you because the sky is the fucking limit. <laughs> What I was saying was that there's this YouTuber that I admire very much, that um, I used to admire, but I realized that his game is to punch down. But he always mocks people who are weak, who are small. I can't stand the big guy who bullies me, or tries to bully me. There is a toxicity that has developed in among gamers. Okay. All right? It is actually, it feels somewhat fascist in the way it's working that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> okay hold on <laughs> here we go hey kids it's time to have fun
Just to tweet out, I mean, it, you know, th- just a tweet that mentions the hashtag game again. It, it, it doesn't even necessarily matter how we use it. Man, the blue check marks are going to shit their fucking hands. It's 2019. I can't believe anybody believes that. Get a fucking ball of water. This is true. true. I bet you when Jim finds out, he's going to just give me so much shit. One never knows when the homosexual is about. I've had over 1,000 rejections in real life, 2,000 rejections online, so that's 3,000 rejections total. I aim as well as possible. I aim for obese women, ugly women, ideally ugly and obese. I would do anything just for a 300-pound ugly white girl. I said it's not me. You are not allowed to bring her to the hospital. No. No, you get no permission to fucking do it. You've got to be kidding. It's, it's just like this declaration. This declaration. Right? Of male dominance. Now put that in your pipe. I definitely cheated on Super Mario with Sonic the Hedgehog. Stop doing this stuff. He's like the blue uh, seductress who takes me out into the night and does wonderful things to me. And that stop! How can a Yorkshire Terrier live in the wild? It's in plain sight, but you just don't see it. You know what I mean? Oh boy, I'm honking and snorting over here, Chet. Oh, I've heard that a shambling corpse has risen from the grave and it's not me. It goes by the name of Gamergate, oh my god. Oh, sweet Jesus in heaven, Gamergate's back. <laughs> the unkillable thing that won't die is back ten years to the date. It's like some fucking horror movie. It's like some horror movie. Crawling itself out of its uh, decrepit crypt. Shambling its way back onto social media. I see all the people talking about it. All the talking heads demanding that Donald Trump tweet about it. Of course, we'll talk about that. How can I not? Being forced to talk about this shit? Of course, why not? Oh. Do we need more energy? Do we need more energy now that Gamergate is back, chat? Do we need to get on up? Should we do a little wigger wiggle? Like our favorite piggy boy. Do a little dance, a little hooting and hollering, a little shuffle toe over here. Oh boy, Gamergate's back, and the gamers are. It's the revenge of the gamers. 
Oh, this is what you get for all those microtransactions. We're getting whores out of video games for sure this time, guys. No more women allowed. Gamer girls, we're coming for you. That's all it's about. It's about getting all the chicks out of games. Fuck ethics. This is misogyny time. <laughs> That's right. Chad agrees with me. All these whores need to learn a lesson. That's what Sargon told me. I talked to Sargon before the stream chat. And he told me explicitly, Jim. He put down his uh, tray of entrees. And he said, Jim, thank you for coming to the restaurant. the first thing he said. He's a great waiter. But he said, Jim, we got to teach these sluts a lesson. Women aren't people. This is verbatim what Sargon told me. Women are not people, Jim. Vaginas are disgusting holes. They smell, and they leak blood, and they don't deserve to touch our precious video games. And this time, Jim, I'm fucking serious. <laughs> no more Mr. Nice Guy, Jim. I deleted all the videos on my channel, and I'm renaming it for Sargon of Akkad to Whore Killer 44 my gamer tag. And it's time. It's time, buddy. To put these bitches in their place. <laughs> I look forward I look forward to those quotes being used by Kotaku. Can you believe that Sargon of the God said that? Oh my god. Holy shit. He's got off the deep end. He's become a, a radical right winger. Super fucking based! Sargon's gonna kill whores! Oh my god, it's based! It's coming for him. But that's not really the focus of the show today. Instead, we're going to be talking about something else, about the insatiable bloodlust of a madman who's hunting down homosexual content creators on the internet. It's scary. It's a scary thing. There are other things we've got a little, a little segment dedicated to a long-lost person. Somebody that uh, died recently that fucked up the entire internet and apparently got drug cartels or some shit to hold a ceasefire. Which is fucking amazing. Everybody loves Dragon Ball. Everybody. Everybody on Earth loves Dragon Ball. Fucking ceasefire to drug cartels. I think the Israelis and the Palestinians called a timeout. Like the, the Jews decided they're not going to bulldoze people's houses for like a day or two. So everybody can sit down and have some popcorn and watch like Dragon Ball Super or something. It's having like a knock-on effect. It's a domino thing around the world. Everybody misses them. And because everybody misses him, I've got a special dedication to him. Actually, it's a special guest. A special guest has come on to do a dedicated song to his memory. It's very heartfelt. Maybe we'll open with that. But before we even get to that, before we get to really anything, talking about uh, people hunting people on the internet, Gamergate and Sargon's Revenge, Akira Toriyama and what's happened with him, I've got to be a whore. I'm a filthy, filthy whore. And if I didn't tell you to go... Go and donate for Super Chats at Cash App, Mr. Medicare, or Ko-Fi slash Medicare. I wouldn't be doing my job, but really, I'm here to sell hats. That's what I do. It's a hat-funded end of life for me. <laughs> so, I, you know, usually I put, up, I put up a little image, and then I tell you, hey, here's where the store is. Go buy a hat. But I've upped the production value. I've invested a little bit in this. I went out and I bought some sushi. And I shoved it in between the fucking cage walls of Jade's little habitat. And I said, hey, if you want some more dead fish like your people like so much, why don't you make me a fucking video? I got hats to sell. Now, I'll trade you some halibut. I'll even put a little rice on it, wrap it in some seaweed, whatever the fuck it is you people eat. But I need a video. It's got to be a banger. Because I got fucking hats to sell. After she cried about a good 20 minutes I use the hose on her because it gets filthy in there <laughs> only people are allowed to use a shower i've already went over this women aren't people but you whipped up a little video so here is my <laughs> here is my advertisement oh boy here's the commercial made by somebody being held hostage enjoy chat by buying a goddamn american capitalist hat Oh, got to use that USA dollars to do it. Where are you going to do that, you ask? Well, you don't really ask, but I'm going to show you anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm going to show you anyway. 
Oh, look at those hats. Quality fucking hats, ladies and gentlemen. Word around town, it looks fancy. Buy a hat for your hat. For your hat. Buy a hat 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 for your hat. Wear it around town. It looks fancy. Buy, buy a hat for your hat. When I'm sad, pay me. It's the only cure, really. When you're very sad, you need to pay me money. You gotta buy my fucking hats. All right, that's the only way you're gonna teach these communists their fucking place. These lemon-loving motherfuckers by buying a goddamn American capitalist hat. Oh, gotta use that USA dollars to do it. Buy a hat for your hat. For your hat. Quality fucking hats, ladies and gentlemen. Buy a hat for your hat. For your hat. Wear it around town, it looks fancy. Buy, buy a hat for your hat. 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 Too much. Love the red, white, and blue. Love my apple pie and baseball. Sometimes I just look at the Statue of Liberty. It's so goddamn beautiful. Oh, that is good stuff. <laughs> you know what? Buy a hat for your hat. Buy a hat for your hat. You know what? Buy, buy a hat for your hat. To sell you beautiful fucking hats. We all love Jim's hats. Let me, let me move a little bit. Oh. Over on Shopify. Medicare.myshopify.com. Buy the finest hats available. You gotta do this. You're gonna do that over at my store. Buy my hats. Teach the communists a lesson. Fuck the lemons. Buy a hat. You gotta do this. Buy my hats. I gotta do this. I buy my hat. <laughs> you know what? Buy a hat for your hat. I gotta do this. Buy my hat. I gotta do this. Buy a hat for your hat. Quality. Buy my hat. I gotta do this. Buy a hat for your hat. I gotta do this. Buy my hat. I gotta do this. Buy a hat for your hat. Oh. Holy shit! Oh, what a fucking beautiful ending to this. Oh, God, let me get a cigarette for this one. She works pretty good for some sushi. I gotta take a little prodding, but I'd say that's that's a banger. That is a banger, folks. Again, that's MedicareMyShopify.com. Fantastic hats, Bully the Week sweaters, bento boxes, Tumblers and cups and shit. I don't, there's a lot of stuff over there. There's a lot of stuff over there. It's the only way we could destroy these whores. It's buying hats. Also protecting our cats. But Mersh as he kidnaps them. So a little bit of news has been going around. You know, let's start with Akira Toriyama. You know what? Let's, let's do this proper. Okay. Let's do this properly. Some sad news. 
sad news. I'm going to read this. It's a little depressing. Start off with some of the sad news first and get into the more proper stuff later. So it's not a downer of a stream. I know the last one was a bit of a downer of a stream. This was put up earlier. Uh, dear friends and partners, we are deeply saddened to inform you that manga creator Akira Toriyama passed away on March 1st due to acute subdural hematoma. He was the age of 68. It's our deep regret that he still had several works in the middle of creation with great enthusiasm. Also, he would have had many things to achieve. Aubrey has left many manga titles and works of the art to this world. Thanks to the support of so many people around the world, he has been able to continue his creative activities for over 45 years. We hope that Akira Toriyama's unique world of creation continues to be loved by everyone for a long time to come. We inform you this uh, sad news with gratefulness for your kindness and during his lifetime. Funeral services will be held with his family and very few relatives following his wishes for tranquility. We respectfully inform that we will not accept flowers, condolences, gifts, uh, visitings, offerings, and others. Uh, also, we ask you refrain from conducting interviews with his family. Future plan for commemorate gathering is not yet decided. We will let you know when it and if it's confirmed. We deeply thank you for your understanding and support as always. And that was put up by Bird Studio on March 8th. So for those uninformed, Akira Toriyama is, I mean, 45 fucking years. 45 years in the business. I doubt there's a single person who hasn't at least read or seen something that he's created. The, you know, when you talk about YouTube and kind of the early days of it, you, you couldn't go one or two videos without running into a AMV with Dragon Ball as the video and like Disturbed or Linkin Park as the music soundtrack. It's like one of the original things on YouTube as you had all the angry video game people, you had all the uh, commentators, everybody in this like proto form of what they were going to be and do. And right at the beginning, there he was. Typical shit. You had like a Vegeta or a Goku fight sequence with Disturbed playing in the background, a little Linkin Park. I remember those. I think everybody's probably seen one. They became so standard. They became so just ubiquitous about using YouTube that like everybody, you'd say AMV and they'd be like, oh yeah, Dragon Ball and Disturbed. Or people watched it on Toonami, Cartoon Network. The amount of people that still watch it and still love it is, uh, it's mind boggling. And so I thought, you know, I, I took some time to think, how are we going to do this? Right? Because it's sad that he's gone. A lot of people loved his work. I did. I bet a lot of you did too. So how can we honor his memory? So I reached out to a special someone. Somebody who has already done a tribute video to the loss of a, another very powerful and a well-loved creator. Uh, they were in the video game industry. And I said, could you please sing us a song from the heart so that we can remember this man and his work? I need something serious and emotional, something that chat can appreciate. And, you know, begrudgingly, because this person has a lot going on. They're trying to join the JET program over in Japan. They're trying to start a career as an English speaker in a foreign country. But they took the time to sit down and sing us a song in remembrance of Akira. So, Chad, I'd like you, with all due respect, to get your lighters out. All right, this is going to be super fucking emotional. Get your lighters out. Turn the lights off. Make sure it's dark. It's got to be dark for this. All right, we're sending, we're sending, we're sending our energy to him. It's a big old spirit bomb going right towards him. And it's going to be led by the vocals of none other than Chibi Necodemics. Here we go. While his life may, be, may have been cut short, the legacy he left will still resonate with us for generations. And even though he, we was, he was never with us when he spoke, it was clear that he was speaking not only to us, but directly to our hearts. I'm going to sing a song from Earthbound called I Believe in You. Oh God, I'm getting emotional already.
Let me see those lighters, chat. It's fucking emotional. I believe the morning sun Always gonna shine again and I believe a pot of gold Waits at every rainbow's end oh, I believe in roses kiss with dew Why shouldn't I believe the same in you? Oh god, I'm tearing up over here I got my lighter out. Chibi, take us home. Take us home, you sweet angel, and sing to him for us. I fucking love you, Goku! I believe in make believe. Fairy tales and lucky charms, and I believe in promises. Spoken as you cross your heart, oh I believe in skies forever blue Why shouldn't I believe the same in you? You may say I'm a fool Feeling the way that I do you can call me Baliana, say I'm crazy as a loon. I believe in silver linings, that's why I believe in you. It's a voice of an angel. It's a voice of a fucking cherub. Oh, God. Oh, sweet God. You beautiful man with your beautiful voice. Keep singing, Prince. Keep singing. I believe there'll come a day. Maybe it'll be tomorrow. When the bluebird flies away. All we have to do is follow. I believe a dream can still come true Still that's why I believe in you You may say I'm a fool Feeling the way that I do I believe in friends and laughter and the wonders love can do I believe in songs and magic and that's why I believe in you Oh my god, that was so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Chippy. Thank you so much for dedicating that song in a, you know, completely respectful manner. <laughs> oh, I see a lot of lights out. I, I see a lot of a little a little lighters and candles, a lot of clapping, people holding each other, inconsolable, it's understandable. It is sad that he's dead. But I'm very grateful that Chippy has come along to sing this beautiful song in his remembrance. It's not cringy at all. I'm sorry, it's just, you know, when I heard he died, for some reason I kept thinking, I kept going back to Chippy and his fucking uh, mock funeral service for Iwata. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why. But it just, it couldn't get it out of my fucking brain. It's like a little brain worm. For some reason, I thought this would be perfect for honoring the memory of somebody everybody loved. It's just terrible. Now, some people, I see some people chat saying, who is Chibi? Who the fuck is this guy? He's a speedrunner. He's a let's player. He's a guy that had somebody call his mother because he was 
trying to fuck kids. <laughs> you know, your typical person on the internet. The person that you typically run into on Twitch. It's like a dime a dozen. Surprise, you don't. He went for a world record speed running, which I think automatically means that at some point you're going to try to molest somebody. I'm pretty sure it's like, you know, part and parcel of the speedrunning community that if you try to break a world record, somebody's kid's getting fucked. That's just, it's just going to happen. <laughs> People just, hold up, what? Uh, well, I did cover him once before in his amazing speedrunning uh, things, but if you'd like the, uh, well, I could pull it up, why not? We're not in a hurry. We've got plenty of time tonight. Let me, let me just pull this up. Of course, it's some weird fucking resolution. Why wouldn't it be some weird fucking resolution? Let me give you a little background, chat. We're going to take a look at something before we get into the show proper. For those of you who want to be introduced to the man that has such dulcet tones. So our boy Chibi, speedrunner, let's player, video game guy, moving over to Japan, going to be part of the JET program. But he's a little socially awkward. Tiny bit awkward. So one day... Somebody decides to call his mother up and say, hey, big fan of your son's content. By the way, after he autographed some stuff for me, could you explain why he tries to fuck children? Uh-oh. Whoopsie doodles. It's not uh, not how things wanted uh, to go down for him, I don't think. His mom was uh, a little stunned, to say the least. But I don't mind. We can We can listen to the audio. It's literally called, Some Guy Calls Chibi's Mom. It's like on one of those throwaway accounts. You know how the internet has these accounts that just exist where there's just random audio and video of people? And you never really stumble across it until some awkward moment, like some guy sings a, a funeral tri tribute <laughs> to Akira Toriyama. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. There's audio of people calling his mom asking about the kitty diddling. And since we've got, what, like 14K people watching, let's delve into some of it. I'm sure this will be super helpful for Chibi as he tries to get that job teaching children in Japan. <laughs> this won't fuck his career up at all. That's mean. That's Jim. You're being mean. He's trying to get a job in Japan teaching children. Why would you suddenly to 14,000 people play audio of him, uh, you know, people discussing his child diddling capabilities? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Should we do it, chat? Should we? Should we? Yeah, we should. I see knives out. Oh, I see knives are out. Knives are out. Oops, that's the wrong display caption. Go to Firefox. Oh, that's the wrong one, too. Jim, you're looking at the wrong windows. All right. Let's try that again, old man. Old man's got it this time. All right. Well, fuck it, eh? Here we go. It's like, like that? You like how I got it all centered in there for you? <laughs> Oh, this will be fun. I haven't done one of these in forever. It's a little watch along. Again, all you need to know, Chad, as we watch this, this guy's trying to get a job in Japan teaching children. Here's some audio about people asking why he wants to fuck kids. All right, let's go. Oh, spoiler alert. Chibi's name is Adam. Uh-oh. Uh, hi. Hi. I'm a random person from the internet just calling to ask why your son's showing his dick off to kids. <laughs> Uh-oh. Wait a second. Wait a second. Is the audio from the desktop now coming in? Oh, my God. Old man Jim is fucking it up. It's okay. It's okay. I'm a little emotional still from my, from my chibi. Uh, from my Chibi Sings for Akira thing. All right, that's acceptable. That happens. All right, I got tears in my eyes. I can't see the controls very well. The only way to console me from this this terrible plight is to buy a hat over at medica.myshopify.com. Okay, audio should work now. I think a little Andy Worski rubbed off on me. I went on stream with him like a week ago, and I think my IQ dropped like 20 points. I've been walking into walls. First, I thought maybe it was part of the illness, but the doctors are like, no. I think you might have caught some of the tard from him. So, I'm blaming Andy for this. 
All right, let's let's try it again. That first part didn't happen. That didn't happen. Here we go. Hello. Yeah, hi. Are you Adam's mom? Yes, I am. Yes, ma'am. Um, I had some uh, information I wanted to share you that your son has posted pictures of his penis online, and he admitted to sending them to a 17-year-old girl. What? Yes, your son Adam. Your son Adam is a fucking degenerate. I, I can you imagine? God, the internet's such a wild thing. Holy shit. Can you imagine being a parent and just getting a random phone call from somebody who says, Hey, your child's sending their cock out to random kids on the internet. What are your thoughts on that? I love her reaction. What? Your old girl. What? Yes, your son Adam sent pictures of his penis to an underage girl and he posted the pictures of his penis online. Who am I, who am I talking to? This is Jonathan. He should have said, he should have said, ma'am, I'm with the Federal Penis Inspection Agency. We monitor all dick pics on the internet under Biden's umbrella to hunt down degenerate fucks. And your son's come up on our radar. We've got a whole database of dick pics over here sent by some guy named Chibi who sniffs chairs at speedrunning events. Now, I can't give you my name. You can call me Agent. Agent, I'm going to fuck your son's life up. Oh my god, mother. I don't. Oh my god. I love how he sounds Canadian. Oh my god, mother. Buddy. Don't you know, mother. I ain't sending my dick pics out to no kids, ma. Mom, don't you know? <laughs> what? No. It's not my cock, mom. No. It's obviously a dick from a stranger at Tim Hortons. They hacked into my apple, ma. Hello? Don't. Uh... Don't talk to me. Now, I believe that was the first call they put in, where the mother was so shocked, she just hung up. Chibi, are you sitting out your little, are you sitting out your little doodad, your little tallywhacker dangly deuce, to the children on the internet again? No, Ma. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that, Ma. Buddy, I tell you what, Ma, how about I fucking slap you? Yeah, man, talk to Did you hear him? No. 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 Yeah, hey, ma'am. It sounded like we got disconnected. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's happening here. I'm really upset about what's happening here. Ma'am, if you provide me with your email address, I'll be happy to send the pictures to you. <laughs> ma'am. Oh, listen, miss, I understand this is really messing up your head, but if you'd give me your email address, I'd love to send the uh, pictures of your son's erect penis directly to you. Maybe you could give me your address, and I'll have a truck drive by with a billboard on the sign that'll be nothing but his dick. It'll say, here's looking at you, Ma. We'll do a little wink on it. Just to have artist rendition of a little wink right on the tip where the piss slit is. Would you like that, ma'am? If you Who want. am I talking to, though? This is Jonathan. Okay, and how do I... And how did you... I mean, how are you affiliated? I mean, I just try to figure this out. Well, the 17... Just, the, the girl the girl sent the pictures to me, and she said that Adam sent them to her. Adam... Some girl that's 17 years old. Did you know that? There's not a 17-year-old girl. You shut the fuck up, Ma! I, oh, you're making me mad over here. I'll lather you up in some fucking maple syrup and I'll smack the shit out of you, Ma. What 17-year-old girl? Do you know what this girl's name is? Uh, her name is Amy, but I don't know if he knew her by that name. He probably knew that knew her by her online name, and I'm not really sure what that is. But if you if you have an email address, I could I could send some stuff to you if if you like. <laughs> Okay, what is your... What sort of mother... <laughs> what sort of mother gets a phone call from a random stranger on the internet 
Hey, would you like some pictures of your son's cock? Oh, I love it. Could you send me some pictures of his little doodadder? Oh, Jimmy. Oh, your friends on the internet are going to send me a picture of your penis. You've been telling me about all the internet things you're doing, the speed running. I didn't know you did it naked with your little dick out. Your email. Hang on one second here. Jimmy, I, I just want you to know something. He's, he's got some issues. He has Asperger's autism, and sometimes he doesn't think. Yeah, so, I mean, here's the thing. My son's a fucking retard, and uh, he can't help himself. Just keeps whipping his cock out. We keep telling him not to do it. Even bought a little spray bottle with water. Squirt him in the face all the time, but, oh, little tart, I just can't stop him. He's got his dick out all the time. Clearly, and he doesn't make, he makes stupid choices and stupid decisions. Yes, ma'am. So, please, I beg of you, don't, you know, go any further with this, and I, it will never, ever, ever happen again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I understand. You know? Yes. He's a good kid. He just, I'm, in fact, I'm trying to right now, even try, trying to... Now, do you think the Japanese are going to buy the excuse as he goes over to their country to teach their children in the JET program that he's just a little tarted? Oh. <laughs> and you think they're going to, you think uh, I was going to do a really racist Asian voice right there? But Jade might escape her cage and beat me for it, so I'll have to hold back a little bit. But do you think they're going to, they're going to be like, oh, it's okay. It's okay, bro. Please just show your penis to all our students. In fact, that's how you get hired over here. Come on, social security because he just, he's got a, you know, a yeah. disability. I understand. And uh, I know he could be in big trouble for doing this, and I will have a long talk with him, and I'm just, I'm sick about this. Yes, ma'am, I understand. Trust, please promise me that you, you know, you won't worry further with this, because I promise you this will never, ever happen again. Yes, ma'am, I won't. Don't worry. <sighs> don't, don't worry, ma'am. Nobody's ever going to know about this except for the video that I'm going to publish on YouTube that everybody's going to listen to. Aside from all of them, nobody will know that your horny, horny, speedrunning son is taking pictures of his little, his little, uh, his little prince and sending them to random girls on the internet. And please ask her, and I, and I promise you that she, she will never hear from him again either. Yes, ma'am. Don't worry. And it won't go any I understand further. your predicament. Okay. Don't worry. Yes, ma'am. Happy. I'm happy okay. to help. Thank okay. You oh, so glad I could help. I'll email you right now, okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Bye. And now he's online. Uh, I can read. I can read it right now. He just said at 4:43 p.m. We exchanged pictures like that. She sent me pictures too. And uh, it's almost like he's bragging about getting pictures <laughs> from this underage girl. It's very disturbing, to say the least. Adam, he's not. He's. You, you said he's online right now. I could I can read what he said, yeah. And the, it was five minutes ago. He posted because, it five minutes ago. Can you imagine how how absolutely tits to the walls crazy you have to be? <laughs> imagine you're sitting there and you hear your mother screaming in another room about you sending dick pics to people on the internet. Underage girls on the internet. There are people calling her to explain this. And you in the most mind-bogglingly stupid thing you could possibly do while this conversation is going on, decide, I know. I know how to defuse this situation and make mom calm down. I'm going to go post about it. No, ma, I didn't do nothing. And then he hops on Twitter or whatever the fuck this is. Oh, hey, guys, I uh, sent my dick pics to people, don't you know? He's been up here talking to Social Security. Well, he posted these... I'm the, he, one, that, I'm the one that texted you guys back. Ma'am, he can you post from my... his phone as well. He can post from his phone huh? as well. He can he can post messages did, from his did phone. Did you put something on there about how she sent stuff back to you too? Did you... No. I can Respond. read it. I can read it right now. I can send you screenshots if you'd like Hold to. On. Okay, tell me. We exchanged... Tell me what you were saying? Want me to say it? We exchanged yeah, pictures ahead. like that. We exchanged pictures like that. She sent me pictures too, is what he said. He said, I was 18, she was 17. Did you say that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> no, Ma, it's totally untrue. Oh, oh, no, that one, yeah, I did say that. Yeah, Ma. But don't you make me slap you, bitch.
I don't know. Chibi's kind of scared. Chibi's kind of scary to her because. I'd be more than happy to talk to her. He has he has a girlfriend right now that he's that he that he really cares about a lot. And um. She said that you know, he had some really violent like I don't know fetishes and stuff. He wanted to. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, your son told the girl uh, after he sent the dick pics that uh, he wanted to punch her in the tits. He just kept saying it over and over again. Uh, sent his penis, it was fully erect, and just said, uh, this is uh, what the thought of punching your tits makes me. It's very disturbing. Uh, I want to beat you with chains, pour gasoline on your face, and uh, shit down your throat, ma'am. Chibi, did you say you want to shit down a little girl's throat? Have sex with men and make her watch and things like that that were just very disturbing. That's what you said to her? Yes, ma'am. What, wait, wait, what, back then? Yeah, he wanted to have sex with a man and make her watch, and that really frightened her. Ma'am, I, I believe your son might be what we call, uh, in the parlance of the scientific community, a fag. Um... He wanted to fuck a man. <laughs> he wanted to get fucked in his ass. He wanted to make this little girl watch him get fucked in his ass, miss. Your son wanted to get his rectum ruined. Anally annihilated in front of this sweet, innocent little girl. She was singing church hymns. She was singing church hymns, ma'am. And he asked for this man with a gigantic penis to absolutely blow his bowels out, miss. If there's anything that I can do, if I can talk to this girl, I would be more than happy to talk to her. He will not, you know, he will, he, he has not done anything like that. I mean, back then, I know he was, he, he dated someone, we, we said, Adam, though he was 18, he had the mentality of a 13-year-old. Yeah, I understand. You know what I mean? I understand, yes, um, ma'am. I'm sorry to trouble you with this. I didn't mean to, you know, yeah. yeah. He had some weird fetishes back then. So, like, not only is she getting phone calls from random people on the internet talking about his kinks and wanting to get fucked by men to an audience, but, like, she's aware. Oh, no, yeah, this happened before, yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be smothered in shit and then beaten with baseball bats because it made him horny. Yeah, his dad and I knew about that. Yeah, it's a little weird. He's really a nice, a nice guy. I don't know. He just, he has had, he, he's trying to do something on, um, he's trying to do something on the internet and, and working for a company. And he's got all kinds of people calling him and telling him that they want to try to commit suicide. They don't need any autistic kids. On, online, <laughs> they don't need any autistic kids, any autistic gamers. Oh, that's really sad. On there, and I know he used to wear this stupid collar around his dumb neck. Yeah. Know, which was... Yeah, I'm aware my son used to dress like a dog. Probably because he likes getting beaten like one, because it makes him horny. Chibi, do you, do you, you want to tell the stranger on the phone how much you like dressing up like a dog? And how it makes your dick get hard? Why did he? Why did he wear the collar? I I was very confused. Yeah. Huh? Why did he wear that collar? I was I was confused by it. Oh, okay. Because, because it's a, it, it was a video game uh, character, a video game character that used to dress with this long coat, and wear this thing around his neck or whatever. Oh, okay. He just had a lot of screwy ideas. Yeah, my son's a bit of a fucking psychopath. We keep him locked in his room and just, we feed him Tim Hortons all day long and hope he doesn't fuck the furniture. We got so many holes in our couches because he keeps banging away. Okay, he gotcha. If he, if he took the collar off, he would die. And just, just crazy, crazy ideas. He was a big guy is what you're saying. I understand. What's that? He was a big guy. No, he just had a lot of crazy, crazy ideas that, that we're just a little off the wall. Just a little off the wall. Just it's a little he's a little confused. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. I've listened to that audio before, but I forgot how insane it is. And I forgot how his mom totally sold his ass completely up the river. <laughs> just right up. I don't think she didn't even give a shit. It's like, oh my son's a fucking nut he's a nutter butter. He's a little nutter butter. Oh, he gets into some crazy shit.
Oh, we had to lock him in his room. Fuck the furniture, don't you know? That's, uh, that's chippy. That's our little speedrunner who did that dedicated song to Akira Toriyama in memory. Rip, rip and pepperoni. You might be wondering, what's he up to lately? Well, he's trying to get a job teaching children overseas. Best of luck, Jimmy. Hope that works out really well for you, Adam. Can't see any problems arising from audio like this existing on the internet. Where your parents talk about your weird sexual fetishes and your desire to prey on underage girls by sending them unwanted dick pics. Sure, things are going to work out real well over there, buddy. Sure, you're going to be Japan's number one English teacher. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't know how the jet programs run. I don't know if they ever, like, just go on YouTube, look shit up. Like, hey, hey, maybe we should, maybe we should go look some stuff up. Maybe this guy in the dog collar, maybe he's a fucking psychopath. Maybe he's a little demented. I don't know. Should we? Should we go take a look? Should we? Should we look at some things? Maybe double check to see if this person might be slightly fucking unhinged. I don't know. This is uh, the sad reality of what happens when you become a speedrunner. You know, a lot of people like to say, "Hey, hey, those weebs are weird. Those VTubers are weird. Those video game uh, enthusiasts are weird." But it's the speedrunners, folks. There's something about speedrunning that mentally unhinges you. I don't know what it is. There's something about speedrunning that makes you lose control. And either you become a troon, or or there's audio of you that gets leaked trying to persuade little girls to watch men fuck you in your butt. The next thing you know, you're talking to mom and dad about it because they've locked you in your room because <laughs> they don't know what to do with you. And you're force-fed Tim Hortons for the rest of your life, which sounds like a fucking fate worse than death. If you like really shitty pastries and overhyped coffee. I mean, maybe. But if you're a normal person, you're probably going to slit your throat. Sorry for all the Canadians out there that love Tim Hortons. I know that's your thing. But now you'll always associate it with Chippy wearing a dog collar and getting butt fucked. <laughs> How do your parents find out about that? How does that come up in conversation? What kind of fucking dinners are you having at your house where that's coming up in conversation? You just drop that on mom and dad? Oh, so, you know, I went grocery shopping and the neighbors said hello. Uh, mom, dad, I just want you to know that um, I wear a dog collar because I want to get brutally fucked in my ass. And there's nothing wrong with that because my audience on Twitch said it's normal and you need to appreciate me for the special little boy that I am. I didn't do nothing wrong, mom and dad. Oh, that's that's real good, sweetie. Getting butt fucked. Did you hear that, honey? Our son wants to get fucked in his ass and he wants to wear a dog collar. Oh, that's precious. Fantastic. Edg somebody chat, edging with a dog collar on. There you go. That's what he's doing. That's what he's out there doing that. <laughs> this fucking guy, man. <laughs> what is he doing? What the fuck is he doing? Read a few few Kofi's here uh, from Chud Boulder. Jim, your accent is on point. Are you part leaf by any chance? I think it's just the fucking proximity. I think it's a proximity to uh, a Canadian stand that makes things like that. Bastard fish. Hey, Jim, fellow cancer man here. I'm officially on remission on the 21st. Oh, wait, hold on. I've got to do the thing where it shows me the full message. I don't know why it does this. View details. There we go. And now it's not going to view details. There we go. Uh, but most importantly, I wore a four out of five hat to every chemo session. The other skinheads were envious. Thanks for another great stream and all the content over the years. Much love and prayers to you and yours. Well, thank you very much. They are fantastic hats, though I don't know if they will. <laughs> I don't know what effect they'll have on radiation or chemo. So I want to be careful on that one. From not Nico, shout out to uh, Kersh for doing one of the first uh, sweet baby deep dives. Uh, I know she is watching. Well, we will be talking about that. Because I can't avoid it. I know the whole Gamergate 2 electric boogaloo is in full fucking swing, folks. Trust me, I understand. I've been, I've been watching as it's going on. Joker, Jim, first live stream I've caught in a while. Uh, bought a hat to celebrate. Die a little comfier on me. Well, thank you. I will absolutely try to do that. 
read a couple from Cash App here, and then I'll be done with my shilling, and we'll get back to the stream. But we need a little palate cleanser in between Chibi talking about getting fucked in his butt. <laughs> why, why are there people like this on the internet? I don't fucking understand. All right, Cash App from William for uh, uh, Love You, Papa Jim. Well, thank you very much. From Andrew. Uh, posting a Rikeda with your cancer aids. Or pausing Rikeda with your cancer aids. Sorry. From Jalen. For the sushi fund. Oh, very appreciate it. From Michael. Uh, Daddy Jim. Thank you very much. We got one from Jal. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It's uh, $10 from Israel with love for $5. It's very funny. <laughs> it's very well done, Alex. Uh, I'm too poor to get a hat. That's fine. That's fine. I'll sell two hats to somebody else. Don't worry about it. From James, have a pack of smokes on me for all the good times. Finally read one more here. From, oh, I thought this, for, holy shit, I thought this was from CRP for a second. From CPRS. Best wishes, thanks for your time. Okay, I thought that was CRP. I was going to say, holy shit, he's alive. Then I'd have to quickly scramble. I'd have to quickly run and scramble for a CRP clip. Do I even fucking have one? Is there a CRP clip? Did I keep one in here? For his eventual return when he rises from the... It's all part of Project Mayhem. A lot of you might know this, but CRP did a video that's gone. I'm sure there's an archive somewhere. Where he talked about how to fight back against those in power. This is before the Ukraine-Russia thing. And he came up with the idea of Project Mayhem. Fucking highly original. Uh, where he instructed people to use bubble gum and toothpicks on federal buildings. That was his that was his uh, fighting back against the man in power. Slightly inconveniencing federal employees by making them call a locksmith because of dude put a toothpick in your lock. Oh, he was such a wacky guy. Oh, we do have a clip. You know what, let's play it. This is a this is a classic CRP clip. And it fits in with our theme of Gamergate 2. You know, he may be dead, but he fit right in with the new hashtag. Women are like dogs. Now, what do I mean? You have to treat them like you would treat a dog. You ever go up to a dog and you're afraid of the dog and the dog senses it and the, and the dog gets up and smells the fear coming off of you and starts barking at you and snarling at you and showing its teeth and it's pissed off at you and doesn't like you. And you're like all insecure and tentative, like, uh, uh, I'm sorry, hi, can, can I get you a drink? I, I, I just want to be friends, please don't bite me. And what's that woman gonna do? She's gonna snarl at you. She's gonna look at you like, ew, creepy, ew, rough. If you're firm and self-confident, they respond. They get relaxed, see, just like dogs. You go up to a dog, you know, a big, mean Doberman pincher, right? Or, or, or whatever, some Germanic, uh, what's a Rottweiler, right? Or a pit bull, you know? You go up to that dog, you know, and he's like, hey, don't fuck with me, dog. So that's what you have to do. You have to treat women like dogs. Sound relationship advice from a master himself, gone before our time. You gotta treat them like dogs, yeah. I can't do it as well. Like Godwinson's got a really good CRP down. He does the yaw really, really good. PPP can do it pretty well, too. You have to be gifted to really get CRPs. Yaw! You know, I know over in Suvrock, uh, Suvrock, who does stream snipes over on kek.com, he's got a whole TTS system built with, like, everybody on the Internet's voice, which is great. And slowly, the robot is learning. It's learning how to get that yaw down just fucking right, so it's almost perfect. So you can still hear that, that, that whispered, Guidance from beyond the uh, ether of Coach as he yaws at you. Yeah, we're never going to get that Knoxville footage. He had Knoxville footage. We'll never see that. We'll never get to read Wilshire Boulevard. <sighs> A lot of shit lost to the ages. You know, I'm, I'm going to probably have to edit that Chibi video and make him do a, a dedicated song to CRP as well. In fact, maybe I'll just start a channel where Chibi just sings for people that have passed away. And then we could, you know, I almost want to, I wonder if we took that Akira tribute video and then sent it over to the Japanese <laughs> and told them that he was confused. And that's why he had Nintendo characters on screen, because he kept thinking that Akira Toriyama was the creator of Nintendo characters. Uh, I wonder if they'd believe that. I wonder if you like, oh, this poor handicapped child. So confused. He doesn't understand anything. Yeah. 
We keep getting all these emails from these Americans talking about some dude in a dog collar with dick pics. And he keeps singing tribute videos because <laughs> he thinks a Karatoriyama created Pokemon. Who the fuck is this guy? And why do they keep sending email after email about it to us? And he's singing so bad. They sent me a clip of him sniffing some chair some dude sat on. I don't know what the... Of course, they're not speaking English, but I can't do Japanese. So you have to imagine. Use your thinking thoughts and pretend that this is Japanese. <sighs> I think Kira thing kind of went off onto a bit of a tangent, didn't it? We've got two bigger things to talk about. One, Gamergate 2! Electric Bugaloo! And the other would be H-Bomber Guy's lust for the blood of innocent men on the internet. Can anybody stop him? I don't know if they can. But we've been going for about an hour, so I'm going to take a small break and grab a drink. When we come back, we're going to take a little walk down memory lane. Talk a little bit about Medicare.org, the forums, the founder, and the members. Talk about H-Bomber Guy, somebody who I had the pleasure of sitting down with and watching hardcore Naruto porn with. Bet you didn't know that. Well, most of you probably did. But we got about 14K watching, so I'm sure there are a few thousand that never heard this before. But yes, H. Bomber Guy and I watched Naruto pornography together. 30 minutes of hardcore Naruto fucking going on. Oh, good times. Good times. So let me put on a little break music. I'm going to go get a drink. Grab yourself a drink. Grab yourself some food. Come back. We'll talk about H. Bomber's hunt for gay men on the internet and how he's insatiably slaughtering everyone who gets in his way. Terrible. Tragic. Can't believe he's doing it. Can't believe bread tubes finally decided they want blood. They want the souls of the innocent. And H. Bomber's leading the way. No more four-hour essays for him. He's coming knives out for motherfuckers.
Okay, we're back, Chad. Somebody said, can I get a 10-hour loop of this? Ha! Huh. Can you ever? Actually, Jade has made a little a little YouTube channel to put all her little creations up on called Medicare Assistant. Let me see if I can find this. So she just puts her little her little videos up there because she's enjoying herself uh, doing that apparently. Uh, these are these are her own little creations as she fucks around in editing programs and far surpasses my ability. I mean, you've, you've heard my videos and streams over the years. I'm still using this tin can mic shit. My idea of editing is really rough and dirty. She's got to be all fancy about it. Let me, let me find a video here. You know what? We'll play that one. Why not? We'll do this one. I, I'll show you what she's gotten up to over there. As part of her ritual humiliation of me. <laughs> It's part of it's part of her way of just humiliating me for no reason. Uh, let me see. How would I do this? If I go to if I go to Firefox, would I do that? Just one second, everyone. The old man's the old man's trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. All right, here we go. There we go. She does little shorts. You see the little short? Turn the volume on here. Here you go. Me, you're my little butterball. This looks good on you. What a naughty raccoon you are. <laughs> I have no idea why she creates these things. She does, though. <laughs> uh, look at that little raccoon hat. Look at that. It's adorable. He's a little butterball. There you go. There you go. That's part of my uh, ritual humiliation. There you go. There, there, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. You can go loop that on 10 hours if you'd like. <laughs> I'm, not sure what, I'm not sure where that got pulled from. She tells me there's a stream, apparently. Or it's like Monday and Matt was wearing a raccoon hat for some reason. I don't know or even remember this. This could have been like really early days when I was just so drunk I didn't know what the fuck was going on. But she found it amusing. Because apparently I called him a little, I called him a little butterball. I don't. Oh fuck me, man. I don't know. Liquor will do shit to you, folks. You got to take that shit in moderation. Otherwise, you got audio out there that's making no fucking sense. It's just, uh, it's crazy. Speaking of crazy, let's get in some H bomb. I know a lot of people chat like, who the fuck is H bomber guy? Well, if you were a, a bread tuber enthusiast, if you were a lefty a leaning sort of person, you probably saw them. Part of the whole crowd, you've got people like uh, ContraPoints and Vosh, Lindsay Ellis, uh, Hassan Piker, I suppose you could consider part of it too, kind of left-leaning uh, politically, but they still talk about video games and you know anime and other shit, and then you know put out long essay videos that are somewhere between 1 to 18 hours long. And he's one of them. And he put a video out recently talking about the hard-hitting plagiarism that's going on on YouTube. You can see it's a very popular video. It did incredibly well for him. Three, four hours long. Half a million likes. 17 million views. Quite a bit of views. A lot of views. Raking them in. So he puts this video out talking about plagiarism. He had a few people he talked about. One of them was the uh, internet historian. Because we all know the most serious thing you can do on YouTube is plagiarize. Everybody is fucking original over here. OC Donut Steel. Really? Really taught the internet historian a lesson, didn't he? But uh, uh, other people were mentioned in the video, and other people were brought up in conversation related to the video. One of them was somebody by the name of uh, James Somerton. Now, James decided to start deleting everything, and then he posted something up in relation to this video being put out. Let's read it. If this message is live, it means I scheduled it before ending things. I have videos scheduled to go out over the next couple of days. Nothing new. I just wanted Nick's portfolio of work to be available. I've left directions that any money from those videos be donated to the Canadian. What is with Canadians? Actually, what the fuck? All right. Uh, videos be donated to the Canadian Association for Suicide Prevention. They've tried very hard to pull me back, but there's simply no life for me anymore. I don't know if we should donate to them if they've already failed at their fucking job, James. I'm just kind of throwing... I mean, I know you're dead now, but do we really want to... Keep throwing good money after bad? I mean, if they were good at their job, you wouldn't be writing this load, would you? 
They've tried very hard to pull me back, but there's simply no life for me anymore. I've lost everything. My only friend, my livelihood, my name. And it's all my own fault. The world will be a little bit better off now. Goodbye. Oh, shit. It would appear... It would appear that James Summerton has killed himself as a direct cause of H. Bomber Guy's expose on his thievery, his plagiarism. But it goes deeper. No, it just goes deeper than that. There I go. This infographic, true and honest, has been circulating around the internet, sharing dark, dark fucking secrets. Let me read it to you. Above is a video by H. Bomber Guy released. Its publication date is December 2nd, 2023. Below is a Kiwi Farms thread. Its first post, the OP, was published February 21st, 2017. Both are about James Somerton. If you look, you can see the Kiwi Farms thread clearly says James Somerton. Our plans to get this guy to kill himself by saying he plagiarizes other people. And that's that's that date, February 21st, 2017. Years, years before H-Bomber guy. Holy shit. H Bomber Guy stole the entire idea for the co uh, content of the thread just so he could claim the kill for himself. It's rumored that James even went so far as to carve Harry's name onto his stomach so when they discovered his body, H Bomb could claim the kill for his tally. Stealing others' work is never okay. It takes a lot of time and effort to drive a man to kill himself, and Harry just taking the work of others is fucking disgusting. How about you cite your sources, Harry? How about that? Well, well, well. It would appear that our boy, H. Bomber guy, is a fucking plagiarist. Swooped in there and stole Kiwi Farms' kill. As you know, Kiwi Farms is the internet kill factory responsible for the murders and suicides of hundreds of people. And they've been looking at James for a long time. Here comes H. Bomber guy, makes his fucking video, and steals that kill. I mean, you got to understand something about Harry. I know a little bit about him since we were on the same forum together. Uh, he's a fucking psychopath. Did you know there are folk songs about him? And his never-ending killing sprees? Bet you didn't know that. But it's true. In fact, I've got one here for you. Uh, this is adult content. If there are children watching, they may want to avert their gaze. It's quite a harsh song talking about his lust for blood. But we're going to talk about the real Harry. The real H. Bomber guy. The real bread tuber out there slaughtering the innocent. It's just one of the songs. He scared so many communities, they've literally written songs about him.
Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, he's out there just slaughtering people left and right. Uh, James James Summerton is. <laughs> oh. Okay. But I thought I'd talk a little bit about the history of Medicare and go into a little bit about it. So there was this forum. Overall, pretty good. Four out of five stars. Started by Goons. Goons, for those that don't know, are something awful members. That's what they used to refer to themselves as. In fact, if you've heard the term troon on the internet, that's actually from something awful. It's referring to a transsexual goon or a troon. So, a bunch of goons. Really big into Retsu Prey. If you remember Retsu Prey from back in the day, that was very popular. A lot of videos about it. God, this all goes back to old YouTube, doesn't it? Anyway. They loved Red Supre. And so they tried their hand at it. And I wish I could find the video. There's probably a copy out there somewhere. But a couple of the founding members, who Haberman is a part of, as well as uh, some others, tried their hand at Red Supre. And it was a fucking awful video. They just got their shit pushed in. They were very, very upset about this. <laughs> so they decided, being e-humorous, which is a serious term they used, they were going to start their own forum. Because fuck something awful. So Haberman decided to start Medicare Forums, which is a mispronunciation of the word mediocre by some foreigner who didn't like him. So Medicare Forums starts, a bunch of goons show up, and uh, among them is our boy, the Lord of Ops, if you all remember, Haberman, destroyer of souls, a breaker of worlds, and of course, H-Bomb. H-Bomb was a friend of his, Jordan, and a few others as well. They'll start up the forums. They're all having a great time. They start very, eh, you know, very, very slowly. They start very slowly. But as time goes on, things get more and more serious. Feelings get hurt. Lawsuits get filed. And there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of regret going on there. A little bit of regret. So I thought I would read you what I'd like to call um, Soliloquy of Trolls Remorse by Haberman. Because a very strange thing started to happen on the Medicare forums. All these people that like to used to laugh at retards, and we're going to talk about some of the retards they laughed at, like to have fun, like to troll, like to do uh, naughty things. They all got trolls remorse. And trolls remorse is basically when, you, when you're a real asshole to somebody online or a group of people or a bunch of different people, and suddenly you start to feel bad about it one day and decide that the only solution is to become the other extreme of the spectrum. Not to just, you know, adjust yourself and be normal, have a little bit of, you know, normalcy to your life, but just become the most cookie cutter, in this case, lip shit, let's just say, uh, personality you could become. So Haberman gets very upset after years of running the forum with his fellow goons, H-Bomb and everybody else, and decides that he's going to put up uh, uh, a long, long essay about how terrible he was and how sad he feels about this and its troll's remorse. And this is something that affected him. It affected Jordan, who went on to found another website called Busy Street, which was its own shit show. And of course, it affected H. Bomber Guy, who, after the closure of the forums, suddenly got into being a bread tuber and a lefty. Well, he was always kind of a lefty, to be honest, but got into bread tubing, let's say. So let's take a look at Habe's regret. I've got this queued up here. I hope you're ready. This is what he, you need to understand, too. This is, I've talked about this before, but it still is remarkable to me. Haberman was probably one of the only people on the internet that was actually able to scrub almost everything related to this forum off of it. There have always been archives of shit people do online. You know how they say when it's on the internet, it's on the internet forever? Untrue. Untrue. I've seen one guy, and one guy only, Haberman, be able to actually erase the entire fucking thing. I don't know how he did it, but he did. You can go to the Wayback Machine, nothing's there. You can go to archive.is and all the variations of it, nothing's there. Just this, just this final letter. And a few screen caps and maybe one or two YouTube videos of somebody scrolling the forum right before it closed, and that that's it. He completely fucking erased it. He was so riddled with Troll's Remorse, so fucked up over it, that he completely made it disappear. You might be wondering, what did he do that was so terrible? that he would want to erase every vestige of it from the internet. Well, we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into the shenanigans of these boys. But let's take a look at uh, Habiberman. This will be fun to read. This is a former member of Medicare. I can give you some insights into it. This is uh, from Haberman himself. Prepare. Ooh. 
Medicare began in late 20 or 2008 and fell apart in early 2012. Over the course of three years, we managed to do a lot of damage, often to innocent and undeserving people. While we took pride in the time for putting positive spins on our operations, claiming the people we were attacking had it coming, or that they had learned a valuable lesson. It can be safely said now that our actions at the time were indefensible, plain and simple. Founded by me, Haberman, and the elusive Catalyst, the original goal of the organization was to get away from the juvenile trolling under the banner of activism, claiming that our actions would somehow act as a catalyst for some sort of unspecified positive change. As new members were recruited, and with Catalyst quietly leaving at this point, our methods of trolling began to closer resemble targeted harassment, with the primary goal of the site being a forum dedicated to gathering and distributing the personal information of our unfortunate targets. With a YouTube channel dedicated to commentaries over other users, a means of gauging how susceptible a potential target might be to our harassment, a page on our website dedicated to mocking submissions to DeviantArt, another means of seeing how potential targets would react to being provoked, and a growing directory of our target's personal information, we were systematic in our approach to harassment. Furthermore, we were able to manipulate other services such as Encyclopedia Dramatica and to serving our efforts, using inside connections to guarantee ourselves favorable front page coverage. So let's take a little break here and just digest that. First off, no. Uh, they, they weren't founded with the principle of operations in mind. They were founded because they got laughed at because the Retsupray was shit. And they wanted to do Retsupray over other videos. That was the whole gimmick. Films with the Fusilarians and all the other things that were done on Medicare were basically Retsupray of any video that wasn't video games. That's the start of it. <laughs> I love, you know, 24-hour ops and gay ops come from Haberman. See, he used to have this thing where he would be on the forum and somebody would post something funny about some spaz that they found. So imagine uh, a Kiwi Farms or something awful or a 4chan or whatever. And you're reading a thread and you laugh, you have a little guffaw, something funny that you come across. And Haberman would come in and be like, I want them destroyed. You have 24 hours. And that's where 24-hour operations or 24-hour ops came from. Or as we like to refer to it, gay ops. We like to refer to what he did as gay opping. Now, to give you an idea, he also talked about how they had an inside man at uh, Encyclopedia Dramatica. That was LNTE. He was a mod over there. Sysop. Some shit. I don't know. Uh, to give you an idea, some of the shenanigans the boys got up to, let me tell you the story of Wolfie661, I think it is. So imagine this. You're a little Jimmy, Jimmy boy. A little Jimmy boy. Let me get a little, little pudding up here. There we go. Hey, you're a little Jimmy boy. Look at him. That's a little Jimmy boy. I should have put a hat on him. Fuck. So you little Jimmy boy, you come on the Medicare forums one day, you're all smiles. Hey, everybody, how's everybody doing? Yeah, we're going to laugh at some retards today. And then you see a thread that says Wolfie 661. You're like, I wonder what that is. You're all innocent, eating some bubble gum or something. I don't know. Got a lollipop. You're a good boy. So you open up the thread. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> you open up the thread and you see probably the cruelest thing you've ever seen in your life, which, you know, honestly made you laugh quite hard. But it was horrible. So, the story of Wolfie. Everybody knows what social engineering is. I know everybody talks about hacking and all this shit. But, you know, social engineering of getting information and passwords and private information from just manipulating a target. So, Wolfie was uh, a bit of a... Uh, he was a little slow in the mind. He had a YouTube channel with a very small audience. Uh, I'd never heard of him before I saw the thread. So, LMT, who was the SysOp member... Um, he was the guy from Ed that was also a member of uh, of Medicare, decided he wanted to fuck with the guy for some reason and came up with the most convoluted thing I've ever seen with probably the cruelest ending I've ever seen. Uh, so through months and months of social engineering and manipulation, pretending he's like 19 different accounts, he made like 19 accounts. One was a friend of Wolfie. One was an enemy of Wolfie. One was a friend of the friend and an enemy of the other guy. Then he had this whole... Uh, all these characters that were interacting with each other daily. And Wolfie became aware of them all. Suddenly he's getting all this attention from 19 people, but they're all, they're all him. They're all LMT. He's just fucking with his head. So finally he's like, Wolfie, as one of the friend accounts. He's like, Wolfie, they've got super hackers. They've got some fucking super hackers working for him, Wolfie. I need your passwords. I need your passwords so I can protect you because I'm your friend. And Wolfie, because he is retarded, does give him the passwords. So LMT gets into all these accounts. Then he comes back and he says, Wolfie, 
Wolfie, the hackers, they found out. Wolfie, the hackers have hacked me, and they now have your passwords. But it's okay, because I work to deal well with them. They just want one thing from you, and if you give it to them, they'll give you back your passwords and your accounts. And Wolfie said, sure, what, what do they need? They need you to film yourself naked fucking your ass with a coat hanger. <laughs> they need you to do this, Wolfie, and if you do this, Wolfie, they will give you back your accounts. So Wolfie took some time to think about this, but he's slow in the mind, of course. Again, remember, and this he's been fucking with him for months. <sighs> he used the other accounts, and he convinced him to do it. So Wolfie went on live stream and filmed himself for about five minutes fucking his ass with a coat hanger, which is as bad as you... Th what you're imagining right in your mind when you, when you hear this story, when you hear like there's a guy fucking his ass with a coat hanger, <laughs> it's as bad as you think. And so... He comes back and he says, here's the video. Can I, can you give it to them? And can they give me my passwords and my accounts back? And LMT says, yes. Thank you, Wolfie. I'll get you your accounts back. And then Wolfie, a day later, is like, have you got my accounts back? He's like, almost, Wolfie, almost. Just, just hold on. So then LMT <laughs> puts the video up on streaming services for, like, porn sites, right? Buries them on porn sites. And then he uses every contact... Wolfie has ever used on every social media and all his emails to family and friends, especially to family. I think he wrote one to his dad, especially. And it said, Hey dad, look at me now. <laughs> and it linked him to the video of him fucking his ass with a coat hanger. And then he messaged Wolfie and he said, okay, you can have your accounts back. Tragic. Now, I bring that story up because there were mean things that happened. You'd come across that on the forum. And that, by the way, was the environment that our boy, H-Bomber guy, was a part of. He saw the same threads. He'd read the same shit I would, talk to the same people I did on the same Skype groups and IRCs that I was in. Fully aware of it. Fully aware of it. <sighs> so, aside from LMT, doing things like this to poor... Innocent Wolfie. I could take innocent boy Jim off because Jim. <laughs> Jesus. I got it. It was a hell of a morning. I mean, you don't really walk into a thread like that. Like, it, it was months of work. It was months of work. I don't know. I don't even know how. I don't know how he found the guy. Like, I don't even know why he chose him, but he just did. It's like, yeah, this guy, this guy will do. I'm going to make this guy fuck himself with a coat hanger. <laughs> Holy fuck. Uh, there's probably on Pornhub somewhere a video buried under some kind of tag or name of Wolfie that's still out there. The last I remember uh, ever being posted in that thread were a bunch of like, um, what are they called? The people that are like horny for fat people. Those people like really like the video. Like he found it. He found a new audience. And them they they were like, send us. So I, I, I believe what LMTE did was he took all the comments of people saying, hey, you look pretty sexy, fat boy. And just would forward them <laughs> to Wolfie and his family. It was just cruelty upon cruelty. But that wasn't done by the Lord of Ops. Let me just, again, reiterate. I know. He did much darker things. Anyway, let's let's get back to our... I just wanted to give you a little idea of some of the, the mean things that were going on there. Okay. At the same time, we managed to... Oh, let me make sure that's clear okay at the same time we managed to maintain a legitimate front by enlisting less insidious individuals to create content for us which allowed us to continue to pass ourselves off as activists and <laughs> e-humorous of course the true intent of the core members of the organization was far darker again who would the core members of the organization be uh let me think here now who would it be be haberman and uh oh yeah haberman's friend his good goon buddy would be what I would consider a core member. As opportunities for larger exposure presented themselves, we took full advantage, continuing to contribute to and manipulate ED would eventually win a sysop status on the service. Our sites and channels began to establish their own fan bases, many of whom were blissfully unaware of our true purposes. We established secret connections with established internet personalities who enlisted our help in sabotaging their competition. We brought ourselves near national attention when news media began to cover a game under development by the title of School Shooter North American Tour, which thankfully was never actually distributed. <laughs> now, let me give you a little history on this, too. 
Uh, so I was the idea guy behind this. So one day when we were talking, uh, just shooting the shit, uh, I, and I can't even remember, there was some story that was out about a school shooting. And I, I vaguely remember talking to Haberman and a few of the others. I think uh, uh, Nervatel was there and Pocky and a few others. And saying that, you know, wouldn't it be funny if we made a video game that was directly about shooting up a school? <laughs> And, like, we'd have difficulty modes based on the weapons loadout that all previous school shooters had. And so, like, the, the, the Dark Souls version of this, what was that little Asian girl? There's, like, an eight-year-old Asian elementary school girl who, like, used a box cutter in her school. So that, that would be, like, the hardcore difficulty setting because you're against SWAT and all you've got is a box cutter. But the thing is, none of us can program. None of us know how to do any of that, except for, like, one guy. And so that one guy is the guy that ended up having to do the mod that was going to be this game. And so as the game was in development, as this mod is being created, journalists started writing about it and how horrible it was. It even got listed as, I don't know how this happened, but there's a Supreme Court case where one of the Supreme Court justices references this video game in, uh, in their opinion, where they, they talk about it very briefly. <laughs> Our shit post of a video game made it to the Supreme Court. And it had to do with video games and creative freedom and all this other. It's very weird. But Haberman's grand plan for this was, and he talked to Fox News like three times. He was going to get on Fox News as the creator of the School Shooter North American Tour 2012 and get on with Jack Thompson. And then when Jack started going in about how video games are violent and terrible, Haberman, instead of disagreeing, was going to fuck with Fox and with Jack and say he absolutely agreed. In fact, he made the game specifically to show how evil video games were and that video game uh, players needed to be curtailed. And he was just going to agree nonstop and talk about how terrible games were and how glad he was Fox News <laughs> and Jack Thompson were there to save the day. That was his master troll op. He took a fun little mod, and that's what he was going to do with it. But of course, we have to continue with Haberman as he gets into the darker forms of things. We played a dangerous game with many of our operations, narrowly avoiding any sort of serious consequences for various serious charges. We blackmailed police officers, impersonated religious officials, intimidated the families of victims, and pushed unstable individuals to the point where they suffered complete breakdowns. It is difficult to ascertain if we were directly responsible for any loss of life, but the unfortunate reality is that we may very well have likely been so. It almost seems better to say this, but the thought of this will haunt me until the day I die. Now, I bring this up because it's interesting. I, I know I'm shit posting a bit about an H-bomber guy here. But he went after Somerton. He went after other people for plagiarism. Now you got Somerton writing suicide notes. And here Haberman is talking about how he established this forum that did all these dark things. And one of the things that Haberman himself is admitting that they love to do was to push unstable people to the point of complete breakdowns and potentially driving them to suicide. Uh-oh. Harry, have you cited your sources yet? Huh? Stealing kills from Kiwi Farms? I guess the blood loss never ends. Subpoenas, takedown requests, letters of legal intent, and pleas for friends and families to our victims were all laughed off. We took nothing and no one seriously and rarely faced any immediate consequences for our actions. One of the few measurable blows to Medicare over the course of our run was when we were removed from our seats of power on ED, but not before removing some of the primary benefactors resulting in the eventual closure of the service itself. Uh, though this was seen as a minor setback to us at the time, in hindsight, it was probably one of our few positive contributions as an organization. Behind the scenes, egos from uh, among the core organization clashed with one another, causing many to leave and pursue other projects. There was a palpable sense of paranoia, as those who remained not only feared the traitors, but the others remember, or, uh, other remaining members of the organization as well. There was no trust between any members of Medicare. And none of us could truly call each other friends. Anyone who made a mistake of revealing any detailed uh, private information was consequently mocked and shamed for it. Which I can personally <laughs> attest to let up to a lot of pent up stuff. Okay, let me explain this one too. As we're going over the history. So, here's what happened. LMTE, uh, okay, this is a bit of a long backstory. But Encyclopedia Dramatica for a long time existed as a place where you could post pretty much anything you wanted to. All right? And at the time, uh, was a girl, Vinyl, whoever the fuck she was, uh, started taking donations to the website. And there was a group of people that were really just spurgy 
that gave a lot of money. And because they gave a lot of money, nobody could make fun of them. Uh, they were called the E.D. Singers. They made cringy videos. They said cringy shit. But they donated lots of money. So they were protected. And this drove Haberman fucking crazy. He wrote an entire article called Troll Shielding about this very thing. And uh, he and LMTE uh, hated the E.D. Singers. In fact, the Internet Aristocrat uh, YouTube channel was originally created just to make a video making fun of them. That's the entire purpose of that channel, was just to shit on them. Uh, eventually, what ends up happening is LMT, I believe, got stripped of his sysop um, status. And uh, Haberman got booted from being able to do edits and anything like that. And they got really mad. So Haberman worked very hard to try to get the docs at the ED Singers. And he succeeded. He got their information. And shenanigans began to happen. In fact, somewhere, I, I believe I talked about this in a previous stream or a video, he talks about how his friend from England, England, uh, wink, wink, uh, helped harass the shit out of the E.D. Singers. Well, the E.D. Singers, somehow, through the use of a private investigator or somebody else, found Haberman's uh, personal information. And they filed actual lawsuits against him in the state of New York and elsewhere, like civil suits. And it freaked him the fuck out because he was anonymous. I mean, he sure he had his face out there. He was called Haberman, but nobody really knew where he was or who, you know, what his name was or any of that shit. So Haberman is now getting sued by fat girls that don't like him from Encyclopedia Dramatica. And uh, he, he flips out and he's like, we can't go after the ED singers anymore. We can't fuck with Encyclopedia Dramatica anymore. You know, we can't do any of this. And then he foolishly, foolishly, tells all of us, by the way, I'm going on vacation for a week. Um, LMTE is in charge of the forum. <laughs> so when he's talking about how everybody was paranoid and they couldn't trust each other and, you know, traitors were stabbing each other in the back, what he's really talking about is we took all the legal information from the lawsuits, like his full name and address and phone number, and we made it a scrolling banner for an entire week on the website while he was gone and didn't have control of the website. So all the victims he talks about uh, all the people he would fuck with and make fun of suddenly show up to the website's front page and there it is, Haberman's real name and his address and his phone number with a message that said uh, fucking call me, I dare you or uh, come visit me, coward you know, shit like that um, he was not really happy about that uh, chat, he was actually quite fucking angry in regards to that little prank I believe LFT even tried to do like this replacement function where any letter you would type would just print out personal information. So, like, if you try to type out hello, H, E, L, and O would all, like, put out, like, his name, his number, his fucking address. But it, like, broke the website, so he stopped doing that. Uh, so, Haberman shows back up after his vacation, and fuck was he mad. Oh, boy, was he mad. Remember, you know, again, little innocent Jimmy boy, okay, lollipops and gumdrops and shit. Gets the blame, because I'm the idea guy. LFT was like, oh, it wasn't me. It was fucking... Jim thought that would be funny. I did. I did think that was funny, by the way. I wish I could claim uh, it was because I had matured enough at that point and wanted to move on, but it had more to do with the simple fact that the times had changed. Social media was quickly evolving. People were becoming less concerned about their personal information uh, being made private, and our old tactics were having less impact on a new generation of netizens. Rather than growing to recognize the error of our ways, by that point in time... We'd simply grown tired. And so Medicare died, or died not with a bang, or even so much as a whimper, but instead quietly overnight without warning or notice. And I say good riddance to Medicare and all it stood for. Selfishly, I attribute it to the fact that I was forced to hide my own sexuality and harass my fellow LGBT peers, prolonging an addiction to pain prescription medication, stunting my emotional growth, and suppressing my sense of empathy, as well as generally enabling behaviors which I cannot recognize as despicable. My association with the site cost me friendships, opportunity, and precious time I never can reclaim. You know, I'd like to say, too, um, none of us knew if Haberman was gay or not. Nobody cared. Nobody would have given a shit. Uh, but I, I guess he felt that this was the deep secret he needed. Maybe we'd make too many gay jokes. God knows we made jokes about fucking everything in relation to one another. Uh, but the prescription addiction and alcoholism, yeah, yeah, he had a few instances there where he went a little too hard on the pills and the drink. I distinctly remember one conversation, uh, like at midnight when he was in his college dorm or something, 
where he's a little shit-faced, and he's like, I'm hungry. So he decides to order a pizza. And then he flipped out for like 20 minutes, almost crying, because uh, he didn't have any money in his account. And he had to call he had to call Blake Domino's and tell him he was too poor to order. Like, please don't send the pizza to me. I'm too poor. I can't afford the pizza. And they were they were mad because he said he'd pay cash when they got there. But he's a little he's a little high. He wasn't really paying attention. That's our troll lord, god of the ops, Aberman. Having a meltdown because he couldn't afford his pizza. However, I firmly believe that no pity should be spared on my behalf. The true victims of Medicare were the targets of our harassment and those who associated with them, many of whom became targets themselves. The system we developed for distributing and destroying our victims' very lives was pure evil, as were those of us who participated in the process. There are no excuses for what I did, and no means of justifying our actions at the time. We did nothing to accelerate any sort of learning process for our victims who demonstrated immaturity or naivete. And taught no lessons to those who battled on their own, or battled with their own immorality. It's impossible to track exactly how many victims of Medicare there were, or even who, or or even who many of them were. When I took measures to ensure that no archive or record of the site existed, the names and details of our victims disappeared with it. Personally, thanks in part to my painkiller-induced altered state of mind, and also to my generally poor memory, I can't recall many of the details of Medicare's history. Attempting to recall even a general timeline of events comes difficult for me, and several of those who may still remember the finer details are likely unwilling to cooperate uh, in an effort to make amends. And so it's with great frustration with myself that I must admit I have little else to offer than my sincerest, deepest regrets to those affected by Medicare. The consequences I face for my actions do little to compensate for the damages I've caused, and I live with the knowledge that I may never fully atone for my actions during Medicare's run, not a day goes by where I don't think about the things I did and allow my thoughts to turn to self-hatred and loathing. And, and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a little bit more here. Blah, blah, blah. What a terrible person I am. So sorry about that. Please watch The Dinner Dates, my new Let's Playing channel. Oh, you know, I'd like to take a second here also to just point out again, the moment he decided to set up a Let's Play, once you get into speedrunning, look at what happened to Chibi. Here's, uh, here's Haberman, suddenly uh, just fucking demolished by Trolls Remorse. Talking about being LGBTQ, barbecue, and all that shit. All the horrible things he did, which were really, let's be honest, the only horrible thing that really ever happened on that website was probably what happened to Wolfie, and that was LMTE. <laughs> Haberman, Haberman's idea of targeted harassment and horrible things was really just laughing at fucking idiots on a YouTube video. But he sure likes to write about how bad it was. And H-Bomb was there. He was there the entire time. He was a contributor to a DeviantArt Coalition for Quality Control, or DQCC, or Q, whatever the fuck it was, which was an attempt to just fuck with people, uh, tartlets, on their terrible, awful, shitty fucking DeviantArt accounts. Uh, in fact, let me let me show you some of the reactions. I've covered this too previously, but I'll, I'll show a little bit for it, the folks tuning in. Here's uh, a DeviantArt account called Medicare Must Die. <laughs> it's from 13 fucking years ago. <laughs> I am a DeviantArt user dedicated to the destruction of the troll group known as Medicare. Their website, Medicare.org, is used to launch attacks on DeviantArt users, YouTubers, and other groups of people on the internet. One page in, er, in particular, called the DeviantArt Coalition for Quality Control, is used specifically to target DeviantArt users, and has scared dozens of artists off DA before they could even reach their full potential, just because of the characters they like or because of the friends they have. To the members of Medicare, I know you will read this. Your days of ruining others' lives are over. I'm coming for you. I know the tactics you use, and I will use them against you. Personal quote, overall pretty bad. Zero out of five stars. <laughs> oh, I believe this is the one that started the petition. There's a petition. There was a petition to get rid of. Let me pull this up. Uh, get Medicare off the internet. 308 signatures. Medicare got Nintendo Advocate and missed Nintendo Advocate off of YouTube, and I want Medicare to die. Sign the petition if you want. Medicare films for the Fusilarians and DJMTP off the fucking internet. Didn't really, didn't really go very far. Uh, Nintendo Advocate, by the way, was the guy that did the video about beans for Christmas and how much he hated his Mexican neighbors. <laughs> He's right up there with Matt Pat's photos, who was a guy that uh, had a foot fetish and a thing for fat ladies and would insert himself into game shows from like the 1970s. He made thousands of videos of him like, he'd overlay himself, he'd use a green screen and put himself into game shows. Thousands of them. Insane amounts of them. I, I still don't fully fucking understand what was going on in his mind. 
but he was very dedicated to this. And so, yeah, so th that's sort of the story of Haberman and a little bit about H. Palmer. I, I bring this up because I know the Summerton thing is going around and I'm sure Summerton's probably not dead. He probably is just being an attention whore, but on the off chance that he offed himself, it's a little spooky. And some parallels to what Haberman was saying. I don't buy this trolls or more shit. I think it's a, a overreaction, usually to hide the, you know, the shit that you've done in the past to try to sweep it under the rug. But H. Bomber, he knew about all this stuff going on. He was a part of a lot of it. He wrote and contributed to a good amount of it. So if it turns out Summerton's corpse washes up on the shores of some Canadian, you know, tributary, <laughs> well, let's just say that's Haberman's revenge. Oh, it's a bread tuber out there slaughtering people. Just like the song said, he hungers for new souls, Chad. He hungers, he desires new souls. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible, Chad. Do you know H. Bomber, when he started doing his, um, his YouTube channel, created a uh, add-on, I think it was for Firefox, an add-on to get rid of um, uh, toxic YouTube channels? And I was one of the first names that got put on that stupid fucking block list. This dude's out there making block lists. Wiping out history. Amazing. It's amazing, Chet. Strange how you run into people that are doing things. Doing things and you remember what they were like as they try to cover it up and pretend they weren't like that. I, I've noticed that a lot of these uh, bread tubers or lefties, uh, you know, the moral upright people that are out there writing four-hour videos about uh, plagiarism, seem to have uh, dark pasts where they did a lot of heinous shit. Now, Jimmy Boy here, I'm not an innocent little angel. I've done some fucked up shit. I'm a terrible person. Laughed at people. Laughed at furries. Made jokes about people putting bike pumps up their ass. <laughs> no, nothing on the level of Wolfie. I mean, that was that was straight up cruel. I did laugh. I have to admit, I laughed. It was, it was so cruel. It was so... It's just like, sometimes you come across something that's just so fucking mean, you, you just, you can't do anything but laugh. I mean, what? how the fuck do you react to that? So nothing on the level of Wolfie, but I'm not an innocent angel baby. But it's strange to me that the people that try to portray themselves as that generally aren't. Usually they've got some really fucked up shit in the closet. Now, how, how deep that goes, I couldn't tell you. It's not like H. Bomber was out there demanding people be beheaded. But he sure was familiar with what was going on. And you know, had that goon mindset of, let's fuck with everybody on the internet. Sort of like, uh, I don't know, let's, let's take another example of a a bread tuber or a left-leaning personality that's popular at the moment. Uh, how about Vosh? Vosh. How about him? I mean, how many screen caps and Discord logs and things need to leak about this guy and his affinity for horse fucking? And not just horse fucking, but young girls. Now, I've heard his defense. I've seen it put forth by his, uh, uh, by his fan base and himself. That he's got something, some kind of a fetish for, what was it, the goblin defense or some shit? No, officer, I didn't know that was a seven-year-old. I thought that was a 10,000-year-old witch. A goblin that lost her tits in a magic duel. So what do we got? We got, I, even if you go back a couple of years, there, there are Discord caps of Vouch uh, that got leaked where he talks about wanting a girl who was retarded. She was a little slow in the mind, a little mentally disabled. Or he wanted a retarded girl to whack a horse off for him. <laughs> he wanted her to jack a horse off. And then what do you get? You get him on stream again, and suddenly, uh-oh, suddenly you got a giant fucking folder of uh, lolly anime girls drinking fucking buckets of horse cum. And that's a little hard to just kind of, you know, wave away and say, oh, no, it's, it's a little goblin. It's a little goblin girl. It's a, it's a little goblin girl drinking horse semen. <laughs> what the fuck? Bro, come on. Let's be real here. It's extra funny, too, because from my understanding, is literally before this happened, within the like a week before this happened, he was going on this diatribe about how Pippa Pipkin and VTubers were a bunch of fucking Nazis, and how because they liked anime, they were probably pedophiles. And then what happens? He's on stream, and he's got little girls drinking buckets of cum. Oh, that's got to sting a little bit. Drinking rivers of horse semen. But he's one of those people that would portray himself as morally upright. 
We need to have an argument about the argument and then cite our facts and talk about the facts that we've cited because we don't want to plagiarize anything. We need to be morally and logically consistent. <gasps> Here comes my facts, and I'm going to read this white paper to you that I read off of Wikipedia, but you need to listen to me because I'm so incredibly intelligent, but I'm going to tell you about the morality of these things. <gasps> By the way, I like to masturbate to little girls drinking horse semen. Kind of makes that feel a bit disingenuous. Tiny bit disingenuous. I don't know, chat. Tiny bit? A little bit? Maybe? Hmm? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you folks. The man likes horses and little girls. And I'm not saying, uh, H, don't get this wrong. I'm not saying H Bomber guy likes little girls and horses. Uh, he clearly likes to see the blood of the innocent run across the land. That's what he enjoys. No, Bausch is the one that likes little girls and horses. I'm just saying there's a parallel there with this moral uh, bullshit that's put forward, and then it turns out just to be, I don't know, grift? Fake? Not real? Not true? It's not true! Chat? Hmm. Yeah, BreadTube's had a real, it's been a real tough week. The other thing, too, I find a little bit funny in regards to H-Bomber guys. I, I see this argument a lot coming from uh, this particular area of, let's say, YouTube. That uh, content creators are responsible for the actions of the people that watch them. Or content creators are responsible for um, the results of those actions. So here you've got Summerton who's just getting his shit wrecked because uh, he's been called out for the dumb shit that he's doing in this video, right? Uh, and then you've got a lot of fans that are... Uh, of H Bomber that are piling onto him. I think there was even a Reddit post. I swear to God, I wish I, I should have capped this, where they were talking about how unfair it was to H Bomb that this guy might have killed himself. Think how emotionally uh, damaging that is to H Bomb. My God, poor H Bomb, poor Harry, poor Harry might be upset that this guy killed himself. What a piece of shit this guy is. <laughs> it's just insanity. But that argument gets put forward. Oh no, you're, you're responsible for what your fans do. I mean, if that's the argument you're going to make, and these guys. You know, your fans went and harassed him. Then I guess you look like an asshole, huh? I don't take that approach, by the way. I just find it funny they do. And now suddenly they're not, you know, they're not really, they're not really touting that, are they? But yeah, no, it's been, it's been a tough month for bread tubers. You got the summer tent thing, making the rounds. People have jokes at that. You got the Vosh thing. I think everybody saw what happened with Keffels and Tipster. Keffels going out there trying to defend it and act like it was normal, made themselves look like an asshole. And got uh, just their shit pushed in by Ethan Klein, of all people. And then Tipster, in between trying to date every woman that he comes across on social media, uh, had to retract his positions on this as well. So she's not, not, not doing well. Not going well. Terrible. <laughs> oh my god, we're, we're two hours in and I haven't even touched on... I haven't even touched on Gamergate 2 Electric Boogaloo. Because I was so interested in talking about, <laughs> about just Medicare. I just, oh, nope, not that. Didn't want to go to that. Oh, that scared me a little. Dinged a little bit loud. No, no, I wanted to click that. That's what I wanted to click. Didn't even get to go over that yet. So we are going to go over that. Let me just clean up a few things here. Just get rid of some stuff we don't need to see anymore. Oh, boy. And then we could talk about Gamergate. Oh, my God, chat. It's the thing you've always wanted to talk about. Who doesn't fucking love Gamergate? Oh, let's get up. Get up and wiggle wiggle for me, Chad. It's Gamercade. Oh, God. The thing that won't ever die. Please, Jim, talk about... I don't know why, but please talk about Gamergate. So we'll take one more break. I'm going to get another drink. Oh, I promise I'm not going to drown myself. <laughs> to avoid talking about this. I'll go get another drink. We'll take another small break. Come back. I'll read some... Uh, uh, would you call them Super Chats? Whatever. Whatever they are. Can we hit the goal? Oh, God, I should have done that. All. I should have done that. Can we hit the goal? I should have had a goal on screen and said, can we hit it? And then kept flashing cash up and Ko-Fi. So fucking stupid. I didn't do it. Got lazy. Anyway, uh, I'll play I'll play a little music here. Grab another drink. We'll come back and we'll talk about the reemergence. of It's nearly 10 years to the date, which is fucking surreal. Oh, it's 2024. Game Brigade was 2014. The only thing that's off is the month. You know, if it was August, it'd be even spookier. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Sweet Baby Inc. We'll talk about uh, all the people that are running around with their heads cut off, like or with uh, like their chickens with their heads cut off. All that shit. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna play. Oh, fuck, what song? You know what? I'm. Uh, oh God. Do I want the H bomb style? Hey, uh, no. You know what? I'm gonna play the merch song because I'm a little shilling whore. 
So I'm going to play the merch song. We'll be back. Uh, quick break. And then uh, we'll continue on with GG2, Electric Boogaloo. By buying a goddamn American capitalist hat. Oh, got to use that USA dollars to do it. Where are you going to do that, you ask? Well, you don't really ask, but I'm going to show you anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm going to show you anyway. Oh, look at those hats. Quality fucking hats, ladies and gentlemen. Wear it around town. It looks fancy. Buy a hat for your hat. For your hat. Buy a hat 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 for your hat. Wear it around town and it's fancy. Buy, buy a hat for your hat. When I'm sad, pay me. It's the only cure, really. When you're very sad, you need to pay me money. You gotta buy my fucking hats. All right, that's the only way you're gonna teach these communists their fucking place. These lemon-loving motherfuckers by buying a goddamn American capitalist hat. Oh, got to use that USA dollars to do it. Buy a hat for your hat. For your hat. Quality fucking hats, ladies and gentlemen. Buy a hat for your hat. For your hat. For your hat. Wear it around town and it's fancy. Buy, buy a hat for your hat. For your hat. For your hat. MyShopify.com, buy the finest hats available. You gotta do this. You're gonna do that over at my store. Buy my hats. Teach the communists a lesson. Fuck the lemon. Buy a hat. You gotta do this. Buy my hats. You gotta do this. Buy, buy my hats. <laughs> you know what? Buy a hat for your hat. You gotta do this. Buy my hat. You gotta do this. Buy a hat for your hat. Quality. Buy my hat. You gotta do this. Buy, buy a hat for your hat. You gotta do this. Buy my hat. You gotta do this. Buy a hat for your hat. Oh, holy shit. Oh, what a fucking beautiful ending to this. Oh, God. Let me get a cigarette for this one.
Okay. Oh, boy. It's finally time. Time to talk about people who donated some money so I can answer some of those super chats. Ha ha ha! Because I'm a whore. Let me read a few of these uh, at the end of the stream like I usually do, too. By the way, I'll, I'll go through and answer everything that you said. Uh, because why not? Uh, but for the moment, I'll read a few. And then we're going to get into the undying Gamergate 2 Electric Boogaloo. Yes, I am delaying this as much as I can. Fuck all of you. <laughs> From Eric, long live hat man. God save the dancing puddings. Uh, we do love our dancing puddings. That is very true. From Cameron, listened for years. Appreciate all you do. Well, thank you very much. From uh, Voshin, uh, for all, Jim, uh, prayers to you and Jay. Uh, beat cancer. Uh, well, I'd love to. Thank you very much. From Stephen, I hear it's two for 25 at Applebee's now. Oh, we'll be talking about Apple tea or Apple teas. Applebee's momentarily. From Alex, uh, you should re-upload Vegeta Wins in Remembrance. I should. I should re-upload all my AMVs, all my dark, dirty, secret AMVs for the internet to watch. From Tommy, uh, Jim, can you send out a happy birthday, Tommy, please? Well, happy birthday, Tommy. Chat, can you say happy birthday to Tommy? Can we all say happy birthday, Tommy? Um... <laughs> Hold on. Okay, let's dedicate a moment here to wishing Tommy a happy birthday. Tommy, this goes out to you and your special someone who none of us, we don't know. Nobody watching the stream knows who that special someone is, Tommy. But we all wish you and them a happy birthday celebration, Tommy. It's like everybody, everybody in chat saying uh, TTD. Which I, I think stands for Totally Tubular Dudes. I think that's what that means. Probably something like that. Something like that. Happy birthday. I'd sing for you, but I don't have a singer's voice. But happy, look at that. Everybody in chat saying happy birthday, Tommy. We're all wishing you that happy birthday. <laughs> it's $5 well spent. Uh, from Shanna. Uh, Chibi was on the flight log to Epstein Island. Probably. Probably. From uh, Cape Rubin. Thanks for the years of last Jim. Okay. Uh, glad I could help. And then finally from Eric, a uh, long live hat man. Oh, oh, I read that one. Okay. That was from uh, Cash App. I'll read a couple on Ko-Fi. And then we're, we're, we'll get into the Gamergate. Because, of course, we will. So hold on one sec. Let me load this up. Pete Dill, so I can do this. Uh, from Metalbit. Hey, Jim, thanks for all the years of content. Uh, what do you think of the people who made similar content to what you made? They're called Jim Walkers. Uh, YouTube is just a uh, unending churning bowl of shit that's recycled by everybody uh, with barely anything original. Uh, nothing I did was original, so anybody doing anything that I did, I can't complain about. Uh, it's just generally laughing at uh, audacious th or audacious things and uh, silly people. You can't really call that unique, can you? <laughs> it's just, it's having a giggle at uh, the crazy shit on the internet. Uh, I, I'd find it flattering. Jim Walkers. They, they love the content so much they want to emulate it. Fantastic. You know, I've seen this very strange stance uh, from content creators of varying kinds. Doesn't matter. Lefty, righty, none of that shit matters. That seem to want to take a, like a hostile mentality with their audience, which is weird to me. Um, first off, I, you know, uh, I, I don't, why would you? Like you're, you're creating something, you're putting it out, you're hoping people enjoy it and then they like it. Why would you get mad about that? Uh, and if they like it enough to want to emulate it, why would you get mad about that? Uh, but I never, I never saw the point of turning on your audience. That just seems stupid. Just seems un stupid and unappreciated. I appreciate all of you. Look how many fucking hats you people have bought. <laughs> I'll tell you, dying ain't cheap. So those hats definitely fucking helped. Uh, and if I were uh, some cranky asshole that uh, treated you all like shit, I doubt you would have bought a hat or watched any of the videos I've ever made. I'd probably have, like, a YouTube channel with three views full of nothing but Vegeta AMV videos because I never moved beyond that. <laughs> because I was a dick to everybody. Uh, so to answer your question, I, I, I find it flattering. Metal bit. I find it just flattering. From Johnny. Want to say fuck you to Sweet Baby or failed Canadian tax funded company Co-op? Check out I Want to Hug the Gator on Steam and the Kotaku disapproved bad faith game Snoot Game at snootgame.xyz. I've never heard of either of those, but I can check them out. 
from Hatless Harry. I don't know why he'd be hatless. This might be a long shot, but would you happen to know where a fellow could get himself a nice hat or two? Well, I hear, uh, I hear potentially over at Medicare.myshopify.com. Let me read a couple more here, and then we will get into the... I'll stop cock so you don't get into the fucking game or shit. Uh, Corey K., glad to see you streaming again. Hope you feel better soon, and thanks for the help. Uh, should I buy a hat for my hat for my hat? Obviously you should. And finally... Oh, no, wait, went back to Corey there for a second. Hold on. It's a little finicky getting this to work. I'm not used to any of this shit. Uh, CNJ. Uh, my head is too big for most hats, but I did buy a beanie before they were discontinued. Keep fighting the good fight. Yeah, I'm not sure what was up with that. Uh, for whatever. Oh, I can take this down. <laughs> I think Tommy, I think he got his money's worth. Happy birthday, buddy. Um, there we go. Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I, I'm not sure why. So the company that provided the beanies just decided we're not doing it anymore. So I, I don't know. It's all made in some like Chinese sweatshop. I don't know. Maybe they switched to something else like lead infused mugs. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing says good drinking water like lead. But yeah, the beanies are gone. They're gone. I don't know if they're ever coming back. They gave us no information. Uh, I'm, if you got one, I'm glad you did. Because I think there was like just a, a, a short amount of stock between anybody that was using it for any kind of design and it's gone. Poof, it's gone. Like that South Park clip. But okay, let's get into the Sweet Baby Ink stuff. Here's what I understand it to be. And then, chat, you can yell at me because I'm misinformed because I haven't been paying attention. Does that sound good? Are we good on that? I've got a couple articles pulled up, a few clips pulled up. I think we're good. Oh, let me get rid of this. Okay, there we go. Uh, so it's my understanding that some, uh, some, some gamer that wanted to get all these whores out of video games decided to create a Steam group that brought focus and attention onto a narrative constructing company, which would that uh, narrative crafting company called Sweet Baby Incorporated. Now, if you were to go look at this Steam group right now, it's fucking ridiculous. Sweet Baby Inc. Detected has roughly 228,000, oh, well, yeah, 228,932 members, probably more, with a sole purpose being dedicated to tracking games that have involvement in their development with Sweet Baby Incorporated. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would anybody care? Uh, like, Steam is probably, like, one of the last vestiges of where you can go and say shit, honestly. Now, I know that they've given more mod tools and creative powers to game developers and publishers. Back in the day, you could say what, really whatever you wanted. Um, now, they've kind of curtailed it a bit. And you can find yourself temporarily banned from saying things on certain uh, game forums or, you know, creating threads or leaving comments or even fucking reviews. But still, for the most part, for the most part, uh, Steam is pretty fucking based when it comes to letting you say what you want to do, creating your own little groups, uh, or even doing this curator thing where you can create your own following, where people can come by and see what the fuck's going on. So somebody out there creates Sweet Baby Inc. Detected, and it talks about this company. And it talks about this company that works with video game developers. So what do they do? What is their uh, mission in the video game sphere? Well, they talk about D, oh, is it DEI or DIE, whatever the fuck it is. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. So these are fun buzzwords. I'm sure you've heard them before. There is a massive push by larger companies than Sweet uh, Baby that, well, they essentially pay you to do it. Talk about companies like BlackRock and others, Larry Fink and all these people. That you need a certain amount of uh, people of a certain variation working for you or in your products or in your advertising or in your marketing. And if you do that, you get rewarded. And Sweet Baby is kind of like a small version of that. They're a video game uh, centered version of that larger ESG shit. So they come into a company and they say, hey, uh, your video game doesn't have enough uh, black lesbians in wheelchairs. Hey, your game doesn't have enough transsexuals. Hey, your video game doesn't have enough gay men in it. Uh, you need to really think about that. Or hey, you know, more than that, you know, it's not just your game, but it's your company. Your company doesn't have enough of that. You need to hire more women, more minorities, more sexually different people, uh, because that's part of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have these guidelines. You need to hit them. Uh, we're going to help you construct a, your narratives. It's all out of double talk, really, in regards to what they're doing, but it's forcing uh, diversity for diversity's sake on companies and on their creations. That's my understanding of what they do. Uh, that's my understanding of the whole purpose of what they do. And they probably make a fucking lot of money doing it. Because what's better than getting a rubber-stamped approval 
and showing everybody how compliant you are with this shit when you're developing some kind of a product. I don't think anybody's blind to the fact that over the last five years, every video game company that exists, whether they're the big console manufacturers like Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo, or they're a third-party giant like a Capcom or, you know, formerly a Bethesda, or even some of the small and middling people, have been really jumping in on the whole idea of corporate diversity, equity, and inclusion. Every time there's a special day on the calendar, they're out there with a rainbow flag. They're setting up funding for development in relation to projects about minorities. I believe after the BLM stuff and the, the uh, Floyd riots in the 2020, uh, Sony in particular, I think, did like a giant, kind of am I remembering this right? They did like a giant fund where they gave like $25 million to develop black video games or some, some stupid thing like that. And it was really that vague too. It was just like, <laughs> here's $25 million for black people. Please don't get angry at us for any reason whatsoever. Look, we've got a transsexual flag. Look, we're the good guys. So they're out there doing that. You've got a company rubber stamping everything doing this. And they're looking at their involvement and what games they've been involved in. And shocker, a lot of the games that this company has had uh, their hands on or the companies they've worked with, all the products turned out to be shit. It made a lot of people start to do a double take and think, oh, maybe, maybe these products are crap because of this involvement. Maybe the focus should be on fun video games and fun video game shit rather than teaching me a lesson about diversity, equity, and inclusion. <laughs> So anyway, to, to sum up this story, uh, they make this, this, this curator page, the Steam group, and this sets off a, a firestorm. The company gets upset. I don't have the screen cap. I'm sure you've all seen it. You don't need me to pull this up to really prove it. You can go look it up yourself if you need to. But uh, I believe it was one of their employees uh, got very fucking angry and wanted this Steam curator page, the Steam group, taken down. And then wanted the person's Steam account erased as well. They didn't want just the curator page, you know, the Sweet Baby Inc. detected page taken down. Uh, they wanted them to lose access to their Steam account. They wanted them punished uh, by losing access to all their video games for daring to say, huh, that's pretty stupid. And it's not even like what they said. I mean, fuck, wasn't that South Park episode make everything uh, black and lame or gay and lame or whatever it was? You know, where they go to, like, an alternate dimension where everybody's, like, a black woman or a Latina. And that South Park episode came out, like, a month ago. So, you know, like, this is basically the real world version of this shit. Uh, but, yeah, no, they need to be punished. They need to be taught a lesson. Oh, boy. We're going we're gonna to come after them. And so, it's it starts a fire. So, we're going to look through some of the articles and I'll talk a little bit about it. But, of course, everybody's popping up. All the old characters from the last time around from Gamer Gate are popping up. You've got Anita out there having fake weddings. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck. Like what the hell? This I want to. This is I, I'm going to say this is an aside. This isn't even. I'm going to pretend I don't know who Anita Sarkeesian is at all, right? I don't know who you are at all. I've never heard of you before, and I'm just going to take what I'm reading on its own. I did not get married, but I did have a wedding-themed birthday in Stockholm this summer. It was goofy, silly, and fun. We had a bachelor party, rehearsal dinner, ceremony, and reception all in one. People dressed up in the best costumes from brides, divorce lawyer, drunk uncle, and a ring bearer. Massive thanks to everyone who helped me pull it off, which was a lot of people, and everyone who traveled from different continents and countries to come party with me. I, it, wow. That is... That might be some of the most cat lady shit I've ever fucking seen in my life. Like, Anita, pump the brakes. What the fuck are you doing? I, I, I'm so lonely. Oh, God. All I have are the cats and the wine. Uh, for my birthday, we're going to pretend it's a wedding and you're going to treat me like a fucking bride and I'm going to wear this dress and, oh, God, Jesus. It's very fucking sad. Anita, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This makes me pity you. You've made me pity you. I am pitying. This is so sad. I hope it's like an edit. I hope somebody out there is being funny and clever and this is like a fucking edit. Because that's the saddest shit I've ever read. In fact, we should introduce Anita Sarkeesian to fucking Mersh. Like, the amount of cat energy I'm getting off of this, those two are like a match made in heaven. They could sit together in that lonely apartment, green screening cat videos till the sun goes fucking dark. And all the heat energy of the universe disappears. Female, female cop doggo, wedding bride. 
Of course, you got Sargon out there. Here he's making the rounds. He's popping on a couple of, he's popping on a couple of podcasts, talking about GG a little bit. Or maybe. You hear what I? I don't know, chat. What do you think? Can we make this happen? Is it time to mend fences a little bit, chat? Is it time to make this happen? Are we going to go for it? <laughs> Anita, I don't think you've even read Locke. <laughs> now put the ring on, you silly bitch. I think that, I mean, come on. That's a power couple. Come on. It's time. It's time to make it happen. Having little babies, they Applebee's. Yeah, I haven't really seen, uh, you know, I have to be honest, I haven't seen Sargon's take on this. I don't actually know what he said about it. All I remember is what he previously said. So let's go to the audio. Let's go to the tape. Let's, Jamie, can you pull up that tape of Sargon talking about Trump? Boy, what you're building up to sure sounds dumb, but okay, I guess I can admit I'm wrong if you've got a better angle. Let's hear it. Yeah, I do. I do. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. I reckon we can get Donald Trump to defend Gamergate. <laughs> Yeah, so that was the last time. <laughs> that's, that's a brilliant idea. What if we got Donald Trump to talk about Gamergate? Brilliant. Fantastic. It was amazing. Clearly. Clearly the way to win over everyone. It might happen. This might finally be the time. It might finally be the time to get Trump to talk about it. So. Guy creates a curator, or a curator list talking about this company's involvement company employee or somebody connected to the company starts running their mouth wanting to get them uh, dealt with this of course Streisand's this and more people talking about it which of course they can smell it in the water games journalists decide that they need to start writing articles about it you know talking about uh, like I'll, I'll show you a few uh, selected articles here let me pull up uh let's start with Kotaku here of course why wouldn't we Sweet Baby Inc. doesn't do what some gamers think it does. No one company, or no, one company is enforcing diversity into all your favorite video games? Oh my god. Um, can you fucking disgusting uh, little piggy gamers understand that? Uh, we're not forcing anything? Let me just show you what not forcing things looks like. Just, you know, just for the fun of it here. Oh, I know it was, I know it was here somewhere. <laughs> god, shit. Had it all lined up, and then, oh, here we go. So you'll see that a lot of these articles, we'll read through some of them, but you'll see that a lot of these articles say that this company isn't forcing anything, that they're not doing any, they're not they're not causing harm to the companies or to gamers. First off, bullshit. Uh, the very first thing they did was try to fuck with this guy's Steam account and make him lose his video games. I mean, all the shit, he, if he lost his account, he can't play the shit he bought. Let's be honest with that. Uh, and then when they say we're not forcing companies to do anything, well, Games Nosh posted a clip the co-founder of Sweet Baby Inc., Kim uh, Belair, probably explains the methods she uses to force game studios to censor and work in, in a way that's conducive to what they want to happen. So uh, let's take a look at that. Remember, Kotaku out there saying they don't do this. Let's hear from the, uh, the horse's mouth itself. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher-ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research... Go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. So I want you to go out there and terrify people uh, and make them understand that if they don't obey us, uh, there are going to be consequences. That sounds kind of like you're forcing shit to me. I don't know. I think maybe that Kotaku article might be wrong. You know, in the very first byline that it's got up there, no one company isn't forcing diversity. When you literally have the person that runs the fucking company saying, oh, no, we're forcing diversity. <laughs> we're going to terrify you. Uh, and I love that this is like at a convention. They're at the Game Developer Conference, proudly boasting about this. This is back in 2019, by the way. Of course it's in San Francisco. Of course they're openly saying this. They don't give a shit. So let's just uh, quickly skim through the rest of the article. I just wanted to open with that because I found it funny. Uh, that the very first thing that you find after you read something like this is that person saying exactly that. Uh, Sweet Baby Inc. is not the largest narrative design company in the games industry, nor is it solely responsible for the characters and stories in recent high-profile releases like Alan Wake 2, God of or War Ragnarok, and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. But good luck telling gamers that. 
Late last month, one of the company's consultants discovered a Steam group dedicated to detecting games that Sweet Baby Inc. had worked on. The purpose? To encourage people to avoid those games because the group had deemed SPI was pushing a woke agenda by working towards greater diversity, equity, and inclusion. The Steam group now has more than 100,000 followers. Actually, it's closing in on 300,000. And this was published on Wednesday. Today's Friday. So, <laughs> this this group is exploding, by the way, and the amount of shit that's, that's going on. But, I, you know, I'd like to ask a couple of questions, really, when you're looking at this. The first question I would have is, um, when we're talking about narrative development companies, like Sweet Baby Inc., when they say it's not pushing diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, let's strip that away. Um, these consultancy firms, I don't remember these fuckers existing. Can you point me to them existing when video games were made in the 80s or the 90s or the aughts? Uh, where were they, right? If they're so integral in the development of a video game and characters and world building and uh, the mechanics and the important things that are really resonating with the audience, uh, where were these fuckers then? This seems like a recent invention. I don't know. It seems like a group of people that have come in to exploit what they see as a niche or a weakness and then use it to bully and harass or blackmail to make money. And then, of course, their good buddies in journalism will always cover their ass like they did last time. I don't know. Chat, can you, can you point me to it? Because I don't fucking remember them existing at all before. It's almost like this is just some bullshit thing that got plucked out of thin air and made into a reality. I, I keep looking at chat. I don't. Nobody's pointing me to any of these companies that previously existed. <laughs> Uh, of course, then it goes in to talk about bad actors. It talks about how gamers are shit. We always love how gamers are shit here, folks. It talks about how they, you know, they misunderstand. They don't understand. They're not forcing diversity. It's just happening naturally. Can you believe they printed this? Let me I'll just show you so you know I'm not making it up. Sweet Baby Inc. isn't forcing diversity. It's happening naturally. Naturally. Um put this stuff up to your higher ups naturally and if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants when you ask for research go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want yes yeah, that's so natural it's so organic my god did you feel how organic that was chat oh that's organic <laughs> Uh, they're arguing they somehow force game studios to include diverse characters and storylines. The reality is vastly different. It's a narrative design company, meaning most of its work is focused on writing story and dialogues. Oh, so that's why all the stories and dialogues are shit. I need you to make this story and dialogue, but it can only be spoken by a black lesbian lady. But I'm not forcing you to put a black lesbian lady in it. I'm just saying that you need to put this dialogue in there that is spoken by a black lesbian lady. Oh, I see. I see how it works. I see how it works. That's sneaky. Aren't you sneaky? <laughs> oh. Then I believe there was an article, too, put out by, was it PC Gamer? There was another just shit bomb of an article. Let me see if I can find this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. A company called Sweet Baby Inc. has become the target of anti-woke gamers because it offers consultancy work and industry standard service that's been normal for years. Oh, they're consultants, not tyrants. How many years have they been normal for, Harvey? Let me see. Uh, Kotaku reports, 70,000. Let's see. Other words, sci-fi, uh, climate change, this is all great. No, just tell me how long this has been the standard. Oh, work is a complete non-event. Okay, fantastic. Let's see. It starts with an edit dev team. An idea, this is all great. And there. Yep, this is fantastic. Vague, but fantastic. Obvious, uh-huh. I'm just, I'm, it's really weird. It's just standard, he told me, but I'm where where is it standard again, Harvey? Because I just point me to when this happened in the eighties and the nineties. I I don't see picking a fight doesn't matter. Oh, no, look, I don't see it anywhere in your fucking article. All I want you to do, Harvey Randall, Harvey Randall, please do this. Just show me these companies existing anywhere in the year nineteen eighties, nineteen nineties, the double aughts, or fuck, even the twenty tens. Just show it to me. Show me how normal and standard it is, right? Because it's normal, standard business practice. Clearly, clearly it's there. It's so obvious. So obvious you can show me, right? Huh. 
So, of course, this has led to everybody, I'm hoping, I'm God, I'm hoping, making jokes saying this is Gamergate 2. I don't know. I know we've got people like Asmogold, I think, is covering this quite a bit on his Twitch. I see a lot of different people, you've got, you know, outlets like Games Nosh and others that are covering it a lot. A lot of people just pointing out these companies. I don't think there's anything wrong with pointing out these companies. It's my understanding that a lot of the things that Sweet Baby Inc. has been uh, associated with have turned out to be really shitty products. So if that's the track record, yeah, as a, a consumer, I'd want to be informed. I'd want to know that their consultancy, quote unquote, leads to bad products. I mean, the reality with gaming is this. The age of milk and honey is over. Your microtransactions and your monetization schemes and your gotcha mentality, right? It's reaching its end course. You made a lot of money, a lot of ridiculous money, especially during the lockdowns because people needed a hobby. There were a lot of companies that did. I mean, look at Warhammer. Do you know how much their prices have increased on their fucking figurines? When you look at the price of shit, uh, over the last four years, how uh, they've like doubled and tripled prices of that shit. So you've got game companies and now they want to make uh, atrocious, shitty products and they want to monetize them as much as they can and they want to microtransact them as much as they can, thinking it's just going to be unending profits. But it's just not the case. A lot of games that have come out, especially over the last couple of years, have been shit. They've been fucking awful. They under deliver. Everything is patched. There's always a day one patch and then a week one patch and then a month one patch because you're releasing products that are broken and people are sick of buying them. People are sick of getting nickeled and dimed. Yeah, there are one or two gotcha games out there. There are one or two uh, multiplayer games that are out there with microtransactions that people will play. But that's it. They're not going to keep falling for the same thing again as you keep trying to include it and saying single player games are dead, traditional multiplayer games are dead. As you keep fucking thrusting on people, really shitty games and then overlaying the slathering on top of diversity to try to make people feel shamed if they don't buy it. You've become Hollywood. You're bloated. You're spending hundreds of, mil or hundreds of millions of dollars in half a decade to make a game that by the time it comes out, its mechanics and its functions and its gimmicks are old, passe, and shit, and nobody wants to touch them. And for every Harry Potter game that comes out or Dark Souls or Elden Rings, there are 50 games that come out that are fucking awful. There's another Redfall that comes out. Why am I, as a console gamer, getting a game that can't hit 30 frames per second consistently, that isn't even 1440p, let alone 4 fucking K, on machines that were sold to me as being that? Why am I being sold games that are just getting released on PC and are better fucking running on a PC than on the dedicated console that they were built for? It's been four years of shit. So, you know... After being robbed repeatedly and seeing the trends in gaming and seeing that people are just tired of it as you fire half your employees because they have positions that don't do anything for your game development, you're going to reach out to narrative companies and, uh, what, try to trick us into buying them? Well, this game, with these microtransactions, this shitty Hollywood-like blockbuster AAA pile of crap, um, it's better now because there's a black woman in it or this gay guy in a wheelchair. That's not going to work. I'm sorry. Suicide Squad is shit. Redfall was shit. These games shouldn't be getting released. They're awful games. And people are sick of losing their money. You know, this economy is crap, right? I know everybody talks about... Um, I don't mean to get political. But I know everybody has a conversation about inflation and politics and where things are going. But I think most people would agree that shit's overpriced right now. It's hard to make rent. Groceries are expensive. Shit adds up quickly. People are tightening their belts. So when they look at their hobby, they want to get bang for their buck. They want to enjoy the product they buy as a consumer, and they want to know that they're getting value for money. So I see nothing wrong with a Steam group or a Steam curator putting a list out that says, hey, every game these people touch is shit. It's a waste of your money, and you're going to get fucked if you buy from them. I think of that as a, a good service to provide to your average person. Is it possible some of the games aren't going to be totally crap? Sure. But if the majority are shit, there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. And seeing the reaction of these people trying to punish them by getting the Steam Curator page pulled down, getting their account banned, having journalists write about how great this company is and how people don't understand what they do, even though they're on videotape, blatantly speaking and saying, no, we totally blackmail people and thread them. 
<laughs> do you do you think that's gonna work? I mean, I, I I don't know what the gimmick here or the game is. I don't know what your game plan is. I guess. It, not that it matters. I mean, every article I've seen over the last month or two has been uh, company after company slashing ten percent, twenty percent, thirty percent of their employees. Must mean they're not selling video games, huh? Must mean the games they're making aren't that great, huh? Must mean the cost of development is bloated to shit, and positions were created for no other reason than just to be positions that paid. But it's always the consumer. It's always the, the little guy's fault. It's always the gamer. Us dirty gamers, because we hate those whores. Gamer girl, go home. I gotcha. I gotcha. Just uh, <laughs> second verse, same as the first. Yeah, I've heard this song before. Uh, so that's your Gamergate 2 chat. I don't know what's going to happen with it. I hope that curator page, let me get, let me wish it a Nick Ricada, but earnestly, I wish that, I wish that Steam curator page a million subscribers. <laughs> you know, but I, I genuinely mean that. I mean, I'm being straight up with you about that. What was it? Yeah, 228,000. Quarter of a million people. That's a pretty good chunk. That's a nice, sizable chunk of customers. Quarter of a million people. It's not bad. <laughs> Trying to get the guy's fucking Steam account banned. What the fuck? I believe also, I, I think, if I remember this correctly, and I could be wrong, that the uh, person that wrote the Kotaka article, uh, the it was the Kotaka one or one of the other ones, uh, they were sharing it at the very least. Uh, talking about Sweet Baby Inc. And somebody said, oh, well, you know, this, this DEI stuff is racist towards white people. And their response was, you can't be racist towards white people. That's impossible. And that really started its the next level of shitstorm. <laughs> I love how they say we're not woke. And we're not forcing ourselves. But then they go around saying shit like that. Or they've got this other woman who's on camera talking about scaring people into doing what they want. It's just remarkable. And I understand, too, that the company, Sweet Baby Inc., one of the founders, would happen to be like one of Zoe Gwynn's five guys. Am I understanding that right? So there's like layer on layer. You know, responsible for, or one of the people was like fucking with, um, I think it was the Fine Young Capitalist was the group of game developers that got fucked with. For not towing the line back in the day. But this person fucked with them and now they're associated with this company. I bet you they make a lot of money. There's a lot of money to be made in this sort of shit. There's a lot of money to be made in this consultancy stuff. You give that rubber stamp that a company needs so it can just, you know, tick off a box. They love it. Now, a corporation's a soulless monster. That's how they should be, to be honest. But they don't care about anything. They care about making money. So for some reason, right now as it exists, most corporations really believe that if they, they put up this facade of, you know, this kind of wokeism or, you know, this SJW stuff or, you know, this, this very hyper-liberal mentality, uh, that that's going to generate more revenue. That's why they always have the little flags up. That's why they always celebrate all these holidays. That's why they're obnoxious on Twitter and other social media platforms. But I'd like you to ask yourself how genuine that is. Why don't you go ask a company like Sony or Microsoft why is it that they'll have gay pride parades and they'll show that in America and Europe, but when they go to the Middle East, those disappear? Why is it Sony and Microsoft and Capcom and all these others will talk about how much they love LGBTQ and how they are diehard for that and how they love diversity and inclusion? But the second it comes to like Saudi Arabia or Iran, all that shit fucking disappears. You're not going to see that advertised anywhere over there. It's real interesting. It's almost like they don't believe it at all. That they, It's just a marketing gimmick. So to have a fucking company, again, going back to this, that gives you that rubber stamp, and just basically you can say, oh, yeah, no, I love gay people. See, I worked with uh, sweet baby whatever the fuck. Uh, that to them right now in their mindset, that's valuable. That's, that's capital when it comes to swaying consumers. In fact, I would like to make that a challenge. You know, for any of the people out there, uh, pass this idea along for me, chat, because I'm not going to get involved in any of this yet. Well, why don't we make that a challenge? If they really believe this, if all these journalists and game developers and consultancy companies really believe in the diversity and equity and inclusion, 
I want to see them make their main marketing thrust in the heart of Saudi Arabia. I want the next video game, Billboard, to be released in Saudi Arabia to, ha to feature two black gay men eating each other's assholes with the tag word diversity and the Sony PlayStation symbol behind it. And I want that billboard in the heart of Saudi Arabia's biggest fucking city. You need to fight for equality. And we need to fight where it matters. No more hiding from it. It's time to go to Saudi Arabia and spread the gospel of the new word of wokeism. <laughs> yeah, and a gay flag too. I saw somebody chant gay Just two black guys just going to town on each other like it's lunch. There's a, it's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it. Live your best life. That's what the billboard should say. Live your best life, Sony PlayStation. Black guys eating each other's assholes. Welcome to Saudi Arabia. And maybe you have Kratos in the background. Give it a thumbs up. Right? And Laura Croft, give it a peace sign. But she doesn't have big tits because big tits are sexist and that's terrible. So she's flat-chested. Maybe Vosh will like her. He'll think it's a, a goblin girl. So we've got a flat-chested Laura Croft giving a, giving a, a peace symbol. And you got Kratos giving a thumbs up. And two black guys just eating shit out of each other's asses. Living their best life, Sony PlayStation. Welcome to Saudi Arabia. Should be right at the fucking airport. First thing you see when you come to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> they should, these billboards should line the road to Ramadan. Okay? The whole Middle East, when you go on your religious Islamic per, uh, pilgrimage, you should see nothing but video game ads about gay sex. Prove to me that you really are committed to it. And I want, I want Sweet Baby Inc. on the ground in those places convincing people. These, you know, Sweet Baby Inc. should be sent to every mosque in the Middle East to explain to them why homosexual sex is the best thing ever and why they need to play video games to understand that. So respectful and uh, <laughs> so respectful of the culture. But no, ask yourself that. Uh, serious question, though. Why is it these companies, when it comes to anywhere that's uh, like America or South America or Europe, We'll do this, but when it comes to the Middle East and some regions of Asia, uh, they fucking refuse to do it. I don't think they're committed. I think they might be making things up, chat. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm an old sick man. I can't fight this fight. I'll have to leave it up to you young kids to save video games. <laughs> you need to save video games, folks. Otherwise, um, where is it? Where is it? There we go. Otherwise, we're all going to just end up crazy having cat lady weddings to ourselves. That's what happens. You don't say video games this time. It's not the end of journalism. We're all going to be posting about our imaginary weddings because we're all just eggless. We're dead eggers. Dead egger cat ladies drinking wine out of boxes, crying to ourselves. That's that's the fucking future. Poor Anita. Jesus Christ. I feel so bad for her. Oh, God. I, is this, this is fake, right? Please. Somebody please tell me this is fake. I really actually feel terrible for her. It's so bad. Woo. Oh my god. <clears throat> but no, it seems pretty cut and dry to me. Uh that that's my take on it. People had asked, I figured I'd cover it. I know it's it's everywhere. It seems really blatant, really cut and dry. I I you know I see a lot of people talking about it. Make your curator groups, you know, stay informed on where you spend your money, that's great. And uh just laugh at it. This this industry's in its own even without this happening, this gaming industry has got so many fucking problems right now when it comes to just the business model itself that I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I really think that probably the next generation is going digital only, and the last vestige of a physical ownership is going to be like Nintendo, which you, you think sounds good, but Nintendo can be real assholes <laughs> when they've got no real competition. Look what they're doing with the emulators. What is it, Yuzo or whatever it is? Didn't they just get everybody's personal information? Everybody's going to get fucking sued now, I'm sure, because they got, they pirated fucking Zelda or some shit. Oh, God. Why can't you, why can't you just enjoy a hobby? Why can't you just have a fun hobby? Everything's got to just, just nickel and dime you to death. Or it's got to be taken over and turned to shit. You just can't have your escapism. God, maybe at the, you know, maybe at the center of it, there's like some core component where, these people are so fucking miserable that they want you to be miserable too. Like they hate you because you have escapism. Like you find joy in escaping the nightmare that is reality, but they just can't do it. 
because they suck at video games and they don't want to make gunpla models and they don't want to uh, just do any of the shit that you might be into. Fuck Warhammer. Fuck all that. So instead of finding something they enjoy, they just want to drag you into the gutter with them. Because if they have to suffer in reality, you do too. I'm sure there's something to that. It's part of it, I'm sure. Oh, what are you going to do? I'm sorry, Chad. You're scrolling by awfully fast. Let me see here. Let me see. What am I being told? Go check something. So let me go check something. Oh, my God. Everything's slow as shit. So I'm not. So nothing's loading up, of course. Oh, let's see. Somebody said, go check Twitter. Go read Twitter. I've got one guy saying, uh, the, the single most stale take on Gamergate 2 ever. Well, I, I guess they disagree. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty, I thought that was a pretty even handed take on what I see happening. I guess that's a stale take. I don't know what to tell you folks. I'm sorry. I failed to have let you down. Oh no. Oh no. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh no. I'll just have to stick to selling hits. Oh, I see Matt's in the chat. Hello, Matt. Have you been summoned back to the battle? <laughs> You've been summoned back to the battle. Oh, boy. Okay. Just move that out of the way there. Sorry, I'm just cleaning up my little area. Making sure I didn't miss any articles. I'll cover the PC article, or PC Gamer article, and then Kotaku. Anyway, there's my take. You got my take. See, it's not all doom and gloom. It's not all piss and vinegar either. It's just what I saw happen, what I suspect will continue to happen. I just find it really fucking amusing that the, they're trying to present this as they're not forcing anybody. And then you literally have video of them forcing people to do shit. Maybe huddle up and uh, try better. Try a little better next time. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's pretty terrible. Uh, kind of feels like I have, Matt says, but I just want to play Helldivers. I hear Helldivers 2 is actually pretty fun. I hear people are having a lot of enjoyment with that. I might actually check that out myself. To have a, a, a game you could just play where you just load it up and go shoot shit. Is it pretty straightforward? Or there's, or did they load it with microtransactions? I don't really know. Chad, is Helldivers 2 pretty good? Or am I being tricked? Uh, Helldivers is fun, somebody said. Uh, it is, it is now. A uh, good game. Uh, for Super Earth. I like that cheesy sort of sci-fi shit. I really like uh, Earth Defense Force. So if it's got that kind of vibe, I know it's not the same gameplay, but if it has that vibe to it, where it's very tongue-in-cheek kind of shit, I enjoy that. Oh, wow, you all seem to really fucking enjoy it. Oh, let's go see how many people are playing it on Steam. Is it pretty popular? Let me go take a look. Uh, let's look under... Well, it's number one on top sellers. That's a good start. Well, let's take a look here. Uh, where are we going? Community Hub. Wow, half a million basically in play right now. That is a lot of people. Seems to be doing well. Very high reviews. I love it when somebody's got a ridiculous amount of hours on there and they're like, yeah, it's pretty good. I put it, I put in 4,000 hours. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit. It's good. It's all right. Oh, yeah, it's right at the top there, isn't it? Very positive with 202,000 reviews. So there you go. Yeah, maybe I'll check that out then. Uh, Jim loves women. Gay. Uh, pff, listen to this gay guy. He's liking women over here. What the fuck? All right, chat. I think we've had our fun this evening. Really, the initial point of the stream was just to have a bit of a laugh at H Bomber, uh, finding himself in a <laughs> finding himself in a suicide controversy somehow. 
Uh, I don't know what's happened to Mr. Somerton. If he's out there somewhere, if he's a dead boy. I guess we'll have to wait to find out. But all we know, we all know that Harry just lusts for blood. Just remember that. He's just insatiable. Oh, run and hide your kids. H-Bomber guy's on his way. He's got a new soul to claim. Talked a little bit about Gigi. A little bit about Akira and our boy Chibi. A little bit about CRP, shit. You know, he's uh, gone but not forgotten. I will uh, read over the Ko-Fi's and the, uh, what are they called, Cash App Super Chats. And then uh, we'll close up. Everybody, thanks for uh, coming out. I hope you had a, a good time on this Friday. Hope you have a good weekend. Enjoy yourselves. So I guess check out Helldivers. I asked chat. Chat seems to like, love the fucking shit out of it. Looked at Steam. Everybody seems to love it. How much is it? 40 bucks? That's pretty fucking good. What the fuck? What's, how the fuck does Helldivers 2 come out for $40 and everybody loves it? It's got all these fucking great reviews. Everybody's gushing over it. It's $40. And then some shit like Redfall comes out. And it wasn't that 70 at launch? All this other stuff, it's all $70 at launch? They want $70 for the shit fucking broken games? <laughs> and they got Helldivers come out. It's half the price, and everybody loves it. The whole fucking industry's out of its mind. They're all just crazy. I don't, I don't know what these fucking people are doing anymore. I couldn't tell you. Okay. So we'll, we'll cut the stream here. As far as uh, topics and coverage. I'll go into the Super Chats after this. I'm going to grab one more drink. We'll take another last small break and get into Super Chats. Uh, do this. Put that up there. Uh, while while I'm gone, I'm going to play, because I love the H-Bomb song. I love this stupid song so much. It's so dumb. It's so fucking dumb, and I love it. I love how stupid it is. Artificial Intelligence... Ah, oh, I love it. You know, I, you know. actually, let me say this before we go, because you never know. You never know what's going to happen. So let me get this one out. I think, I think what's going to be the saving grace for a lot of things when it comes to entertainment, especially um, when it's uh, enjoyable and when it's related to cost, is going to be uh, user-created. Here's my weird take on this, because I know AI has been in the news a little bit lately. Uh, and then I heard something astounding about um, people that have, you know, uh, 3D printers at home in regards to sales figures. And it made me realize something. You know, when they talked about, if, if you almost look at the Internet and consumerism, and you had Web 1.0, which is basically everything's being fed to you and you had no interaction with it. So companies existed, you existed, they fed shit to you, and that was the relationship. Then you had Web 2.0, right? And uh, that was this weird kind of mishmash where uh, you interacted with companies and at the same time you became somebody that created um, goods and services yourself and interacted with other people. And now they're talking about like, what what is Web 3.0 going to be? Is it going to be AR and VR? Is it going to be this meta thing? I think what we're going to see happen, especially with the deployment of AI like we've seen, is it's going to get more and more advanced uh, until the point where somebody who's smart enough will create an application of AI that they sell to you that sits on your desktop and you feed it parameters and it generates everything for you. So you tell it, I want to watch a season's worth of a show. Here's the basic premise. Here are the basic characters. And it makes it visually, not just audio, but visually, because it's going to reach the point where it can do that. It's like a, a desktop application where you make your own television and your own movies there's no risk of copyright. You're not sharing it or selling it with anybody. It's for your own personal use. And they'll probably have that applied not just to movies and shows, but to games as well. Maybe that's 10 years out, but that'll put these fuckers out of business. Uh, the other part of that comes with like models and Gunpla and Warhammer. Um, I heard somebody talking about like the sales figures for 3D printers in 2020 was like 21 million in the U.S. alone. And like 2021 was even more. And they were talking about how 3D printing... You know, it's one third of the cost of buy, buying Warhammer figures uh, directly from the company, right? So I, I don't know. I get this feeling almost like you're going to see entertainment, whether it be a collectible or figurine or uh, digital in the form of a movie or a TV show or a video game. Uh, I think the onus is going to be put on you. You're going to buy a pretty affordable product and either directly make it yourself or AI will guide it and make it. Maybe that's the solution. 
maybe there won't be any more Sonys or Microsofts when I can click on a little application, a little icon on my desktop and have that fucker make it. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, let's do a small break. And then, uh, like I said, I'll be right back. We'll go over the Super Chats. Everybody else that came out, uh, like I said, have a good weekend. Anybody wants to stick around for the Super Chat stuff, feel free to. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's have this banger of a song go one more time with uh, h Bond because why not?
Okay. All right there, chat. Let's go over the uh, super chats throughout the stream. Try to respond to all of them if I can. Hopefully I don't miss any. I'll do my due diligence to do my best here. If I reread some here, you'll have to forgive me. Just uh, give me one second to get everything. Okay, well, let's see here. <laughs> These names are fantastic, by the way, Chad. Uh, damn that pussy nice. <laughs> have you heard of Bossman Jack? Yes, I have. Uh, yes, I have heard of Bossman Jack. I've talked about him previously uh, a couple of times. Uh, highly entertaining. From Ryan. Also, by the way, say Anon, don't say my name. Oh, well, too late now. Uh, have I listened to the new Judas Priest album? Uh, do I play TF2? I haven't played TF2 in forever. And uh, no, I have not listened to the new album. From Austin. Uh, for you, Jim. Best absent father ever. Well, thank you very much. From Rodden. Uh, Uhura from the Proud Boys. Let's see here. I said, oh, there we go. From Modley, favorite snacks and drinks as of late? Um, I've been drinking a lot of, it, it's like this weird, it's some kind of like Powerade. It's like flavored water, uh, essentially. It's, you know, the, like the water products where they've got like, just like a tinge of flavor to them. I don't know the name brand of it, but that's basically what I've been drinking, like fruit punch and berry and all this other kind of crap. From uh, Shauna, Sweet Baby Ray's Barbecue Sauce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly certain those are two different companies. From MB, Naturally Oy Vey. Oy vey. From Jesus, Short Stack Goblin Hentai. Well, of course. <laughs> I believe that that's, I think it, that was what his defense was. That it was short stack goblin. <laughs> and I, of course, why wouldn't it be? The perfect cover. Who could, who could ever not, uh, uh, you know, who could disagree with that? From Michelle, uh, please use this for more yellowtail for Jane. Well, I'll make sure she gets it. More delicious, more delicious food. From Stephen, uh, long may Jim rain. Oh, thank you very much. I wish there was an easier way to go through these. Uh, from Daniel, uh, we lost Jimbo. Akira Toriyama is gone. Rip. Uh, it is very sad, but if you tuned in, you might have missed it. If you tuned in earlier, we had a segment dedicated to his, you know, memory, uh, where we had Chibi sing a very heartfelt song in regards to, uh, in regards to his passing. From uh, Cass, uh, started watching high school and now I finished college. Well, goddamn. It's been a while, huh? Uh, what did you major in? Did you pick a good field? Are you going to go out there and make that money? Hopefully you, hopefully you pick something that's not going to... Hopefully you're not going to work at Sweet Baby Inc. as a narrative consultant. I have a feeling that job's probably not the most secure right now. From CAD, uh, Computer CV, have you ever thought uh, to write a memoir? I, I highly doubt anybody would want to read a memoir of a person that makes fun of people that put bike pumps up their ass. <laughs> What would you even call that? Uh, from Michaela, uh, bought the Time to Eat shirt. Here's a tip. Thank you very much. What would I name a memoir? I don't even know. From Reed, uh, Jim, do you want to come over to my house and play? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to pack up all my Gundams. Bring them over. From Adan, what's the minimum, Jim? First time donating. Uh, anything's appreciated. Thank you very much. Vegas can't be chooses. Uh, from Max, uh, here's another dollar. Do the X-Files voice, Piggy. I, t I don't even think I, there wasn't an X-Files. Oh, you're talking about the one with the um, succubus one? That's more of a happenstance of a mic and uh, me doing a shitty voice. I don't can't recreate that on this. From Shanna, uh, do you follow any YouTubers? Are you asking me what I watch? I'm sure I can tell you some of the names of the people that I watch. Let me Let me tell you the channels that I watch. Okay, I'm going to pull up like a random selection. Uh, so I like I like reading or reading. I like listening to a lot of audiobooks and uh, creepy pasta shit and uh, analog horror, uh, just like longer form stuff. There's actually a channel uh, called Anomaly that I just subscribed to recently. It's like four dot anomaly underscore, 
uh, that has a ton of these on there. Some of like, you know, really short five minutes. Some are like an hour or so long. Really good shit. Really enjoyed that. Oh, let's see. What else? What else have I been listening to us? Like true crime shit. Um, I'll listen to a lot of that. I'm trying to like give you good examples. Uh, so like true crime stuff would be explore with us. Let's see what else. Uh, dreading. Uh, documenting evil. I also like watching uh, like a lot of the cop shit. Uh, Texas Law Encounter. Uh, what is his name? Uh, Donut Operator, I think is uh, the name of the channel. Stuff like Lighthouse Horror. Uh, Dr. Creepens. It just anything that's like long form or has crazy shit in it or is an audio book. That kind of stuff. That's usually what I watch. I don't know if uh, you mean like do I follow them personally? No, I, I watch their stuff though. I'm subscribed to their channels. If you're looking for like more specific than that, I wouldn't know. I, like I'm subscribed to like 200 different things and they're all in the vein of that. If you have a good recommendation, I'll listen. I'll listen if you got a good recommendation. I like to be able to put something on and just listen to it for hours. So that's personally why I like audiobooks. But I found that a lot of audiobooks that could put up um, get copyright struck right away, which kind of sucks because I would go out and buy them to listen to them. But um, the problem usually ends up being that <laughs> they like they don't put the real name in the, the description. So you get invested. You're listening for like an hour or two. It gets pulled down. You're like, well, fuck, I, I'll go buy it. But then you can't find it. I've had that happen like two or three times. It drives me crazy. Uh, from Kanani, I'm probably saying it wrong. Plans for next stream or just as the health allows. Just as the health allows. I've moved my way uh, through the medical system to the point now where I am, uh, uh, what the fuck is it even called? I am out. Uh, essentially, research medicine has been where I've been directed. But that takes me filling out forms and having doctors write notes because it's this long fucking thing to do. But uh, there's one place that works with mail. There's another place in Cleveland and one in Massachusetts but I've got to fill out all the shit to go to them. So it's as health allows. You do what you can. From David, uh, just started a new job. Thanks for all the laughs. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. So make sure to hide your cat and stay away from H-Bomber. He's out for blood. Oops. Uh, this is This is actually very difficult to go through. You'd think they would have made this a little better. Okay, that was the X-File voice one. Is there a better way to sort this? Probably not. Okay, Epstein flight logs. I think I've actually read through all of these. All right, this is, I'm on the Cash App one trying to read through these. Forgive me, chat. It's an old man with technology. He doesn't understand how it works. Okay, yeah, back to the, the beginning. I did read these earlier along with Batman. God save the dancing puddings from Eric. All right, let me jump over to Ko-Fi here. Because these are a little better organized and easier to read. Okay, view details. Which I think, I hate that they do that. I don't know why they don't just do it full to begin with. Uh, from a brown CBR, uh, do you have a P.O. box so I can send a copy of Xenotype Silver Edition Mogger? And will you fight Yellow Flash 2 and Tekken? Um, and no, I don't use a P.O. box. And uh, I... If you've seen me play Tekken, there's no fighting involved. There's just me being beaten silly because uh, I'm fucking awful at fighting games. I do enjoy them, though. I do enjoy them, but I just always get my ass kicked. From Mr. Dick Delicious, great name, you should ask Matt Charbo about his new bread tuber grift and hanging out with Fausch. Oh, Matt, please, tell me you're not hanging out with Fausch. He's going to try to make you ride a horse. Matt, are you still in chat? Please, Matt, <laughs> stay away from Fausch. If he ever invites you out to the ranch, run. If he ever says to you, do you want to go horseback riding with me? It's going to end badly. He's going to want you to dress up like a 10,000-year-old wizard girl, and it's just its going to end in tears and a really sore ass. Just don't do it, buddy. Run, run for the fucking hills. From Rectum Poster, I'm currently bleeding from my rectum, and it's coming out like a faucet. I'm crying as we speak and haven't moved from the toilet for over an hour now. Can you help me, Jim? Or ask Jade. Please help me. I'm going to, I'm going to pull a hemorrhoid. This is unreal. I'm crying. I believe the best medical advice for that is to rub salt directly into it. I'm pretty sh pretty sure, uh, Rectal Man, that that's the solution. Anytime you've got a gaping wound on your ass, that you should take salt and directly rub it in. Is is I believe that's what we need to do. 
uh, from Vicious. Hey, Jim. Thanks for the laughs. Have you seen a big... <laughs> I thought that said Big Bang Theory for a second. Have you seen Bang Brave, Bang Braven? The show is funny as fuck. Uh, no, I have not. I have not seen that. I, I seriously thought you were asking me about Big Bang Theory for a minute. Have you heard of Bill Jensen, Jim? Uh, here's a funny video of him. I'll check it out later. Uh, no, I don't believe I have heard of him, but I'll check it out. Maybe I have. It's one of those things where you've, you've come across so much shit at one point that you don't remember half of it. Uh, from Come and Piss, another fantastic name. Discovered you through Kino Casino. Love your stuff. Keep it up, Cancer AIDS man. Well, thank you very much. It's an interesting name. From Augie Nicholas Diorio RFC. Howdy, Jim. First time donating. Thanks uh, to them, too, in the title. Can you tell Augie to fucking stream? This kid thinks he can actually not stream for months, and you were still here streaming, owning this nerd. Well, Augie, <laughs> apparently, uh, they want you to get out there and stream. From Swass. Until next time, Medicare. From Spitmeister, uh, base Jim making all the monies tonight. By Hell Divers too. Yeah, everybody seems to think it's really good. Fantastic Moist just wanted to thank you for the years of entertainment. Recently got a chick's number. Oh, there's more to this one. Uh, when I wore your hat in public and got a date the next week with her because of it. Thanks. You see, chat. You see how that works. Again, that's my <laughs> Medicare.myshopify.com. Get all the pussy in the world with a fantastic hat. Just gotta. Just got to go out there and get that hat. Clearly, <laughs> that's what we need to be doing. From Giant Asamire, hey, Jim, I have a DeviantArt account called Peace Beast, uh, where I generate, oh, hold on, where I generate and sell AR art. It's mainly focused on cute video, anime, and furry girls wearing uh, great sneakers and boots. Uh, well, DeviantArt would be the place to make money off that. From Cutie Kahooty, congrats to Sargon on Gamergate 2 arriving. Hopefully he can get Trump to mention it to pwn the libs. It's only a matter of time. We'll see. I'll be out there and be like, Joe Biden's too confused to tweet about Gamergate, but I get it. Uh, Gabby, hey Jim, thanks for the laughs and thanks for Jade for her channel. So I don't have to, uh, I'm going to, let's see here. So I don't have to uh, keep watching in celebration stream for the songs. It was a great stream though. Uh, yep, well it's nice to kind of just centralize it. From Locke Robster, did you see Hampshire made an AI song about Crystal Pepsi? No, but I'll check that out. From Reality Send, uh, hey, H is bad. From Eleanor, have you kept up with uh, Sony's state of acquisition about Bungie? It's not pretty. Bungie's only game Destiny 2 is underperforming or underperforming financially, and the cope they were uh, supposed to help with live service games has fallen flat. Also, can you end off with Don't Be Rama Rama? Uh, yes, I will end the stream with Don't Be Rama Rama. I can do that. From Bubble, what was the story with watching Naruto uh, with H-Bomber? So, Haberman had this idea for Medicare After Dark. Deviants After Dark was what the name was going to be. And so, the whole premise of the show, again, remember, the, the whole founding of Medicare was about Retsu Prey. So, everything was kind of Retsu Prey focused. Uh, so, the idea was, hey, um, if you're going to comment on, like, video games, if you're going to comment on commentary channels and, uh, you know, different YouTubers and all this shit, why not take the really, you know, like, the worst of the worst of amateur porn or like amateur hentai that's been drawn by just terrible artists and do a commentary track over that, Red Supre that. So that was the thing. It was uh, H-Bomber guy, myself, Haberman was there, and I think one other person. And it was like the world's worst Naruto porn. And Haberman and, had done like, there were like two other episodes before that, one where a guy used an uncomfortably large dildo and hurt himself. <laughs> and there was another one that was equally as funny. But again, Haberman has scrubbed everything from the internet, so... It doesn't exist anymore. That was one of the benefits of him hosting his own site is he could put any content up he wanted. So where you couldn't put something like that up on YouTube and have a laugh at it, uh, he could make an entire section dedicated to laughing at it. But again, scrubbed it from the internet. Just all, it's all gone. From Anani Master Kurosawa, I really want Bandai to release a line of RGG Gundams, a line of funny stereotypes to line shelves with. From Good Man, thank you for the show. Here's a fiver. Wish you the best. Well, thank you very much. Richard Slammer, well, Jim, as one old sick man to another, uh, I will happily get in the uh, where trenches for you, especially if I'm fighting beside the lovely Vivian James. Oh, boy. Everybody's ready for that fight. Oh, so here's one that was talking about a poll. Uh, can you run a poll from my marketing class? It would be a Duterra Candle 1. Uh, if you wouldn't want, or if you wouldn't do, if you would, it would smell good. Three, uh, uh, you're asking me to run a poll about aromatherapy. 
Did you want me to run a poll for your marking class? What? Oh, if you would buy a Duterra candle. You know what? Why not? You got 8,500 people here. I don't even know what the fuck that is. But you know what? Sure. If it's gonna if it's gonna help you get a better grade, why not? But I don't think I can put that many poll options up. I think it actually limits it. So what is this? Would you buy a do Terra candle? So what is this? Uh, so no, I won't. Uh, yes, I would. Let's see what other options we have here. I wouldn't because I don't even know what this. I feel like you're fucking with me, but all right. I'll copy this as best. I, I don't know what MLM is. I don't know if they. I wouldn't because it's an MLM. Is that like cancer material? What is that? Okay. You know, I'm going to have to. You know, uh, okay. I, I'm just going to have to. Well, they can't do multiple choice on this either. You're killing me here. Uh, okay, there you go. That's the best I could do. No, I wouldn't. Yes, I would. I wouldn't because it's uh, MLM. Yes, I would because it's aromatherapy. So there you go. I I don't think, I don't know if Chad even knows what the fuck it is. I don't know what this is, but there you go. There's your marketing. There you go, Bella, uh, Bella Donna, 13. I'll, I'll leave it up there. God, <laughs> do terror. I don't know. Let me Google this. The fuck is it even? Oh, okay. Essential oil scented, or scented candle DIY. Oh, so is that what it is? It's it's uh, essential oil put into a candle? Okay, well, there you go, Chad. It's essential oils put into a candle. That's what Duterra is. Oh, MLM, uh, multi-level marketing. Is that what it stands for? Okay, there we go. Did I catch it? Multi-level marketing. Is that... Oh, did Jim put on his thinking cap and figure that one out? So what are you hitting right? You've got 15% uh, that said yes, they would out of roughly, let's say, 1,000 votes. So 150 people out of 1,000, let's just say, would. You know, it's not great numbers, but there you are. I don't know if that's going to help. You're, you're missing, you're missing uh, like eight of the options you wanted on it, but I'll let it run for a minute while I read through some other things. I've never heard of Duterra before. From Mr. TND, uh, the leftists and feminists are doing all this trash and gaming because a fundamental tenet of Marxism is that they destroy everything. Somehow this utopia will just happen and will just work. That would explain the ent er, entirety of leftist politics. From, four, er, from fake, F4K3, congratulations, Miss Sarkeesian. The manager reserved the least sticky table <laughs> for I do apologize the two for 20 doesn't apply to your party of 20 cats. That's just sad. That really is one of the saddest fucking pictures. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, from Chad Boulder, Sweet Baby Inc. goes to the Middle East. Spread the diversity. From James Stockerchild, will you take part in Porcelain Pat or Porcelain's Patrick Thompson documentary? I wouldn't mind, but I, like I just recently watched through a really good series talking about all of it. Like I didn't know a ton of the stuff that happened with him. Um, and some of it got really funny, so I don't know what kind of insight I would be able to offer. I wasn't, like, on the ground floor. It's not like I have any uh, biting biting insight into it that most people wouldn't have. From Gold818, it's already bad enough with the Chinese propaganda and Tencent and the Russian propaganda with uh, Gaijin. Now our own country's video games with Sweet Baby Inc. Can we just have video games without propaganda? Uh, no. You're going you're gonna, to like, use it and like it and enjoy it. There's nothing you can do about it. From level 10, these consultancy companies are, co are corporate vampires. They feed on ESG and DEI fear. I'll go buy a hat now. Uh, yep, well, I, I figure that's the gimmick, is they, they ride in and then they say, uh, it's, oh, it's almost kind of like, 
a little mafioso, right? You know, like, oh, hey, oh, hey, you know, you want our protection. Be a real shame if something bad happened. From Libby, Eldivers 2 scares the shit out of people because it need, or like it needed because it's straightforward and has no LGBTQ shit in it. It's just killing bugs and cyborgs and spreading freedom and democracy across the galaxy. It beat cock a ball torture three modern gay fuck stupid on Steam with max players. Uh, yeah, it seems to be doing really well, to be honest with you. Oh, let's see here. Ice Wall, someone on 4chan claimed he was a defense contractor and claimed that AAA developers were employing defense contractors to make their games to demoralize players in an attempt to pacify them to, to, to suppress stochotic terrorism. I don't know if making people even more miserable and unhappy is going to suppress anything. How do we make sure these people don't lash out at us violently? I know. Let's fuck with everything they love until they hate us even more. Uh, from E is for Elbow Smash. If this keeps go or if this keeps up, you're going to outlift Kotaku along with the other turds that crashed and burned since 2014. We're rooting for you, Jim. Uh, well, thank you very much. From Ari Goldblatt, this is your Mossad handler. Call me ASAP. I will get on the phone. I'm so sorry. From Red Car Number Eight, I'm watching you right now. From Eric Scott, I rep for the hat from the humble uh, hat merchant, but everyone thinks it's from Grand Theft Auto. Well, fantastic. Then you don't have to explain it's from some weird YouTuber. Be like, yeah, no, I love Grand Theft Auto. I'm totally normal. <laughs> That's a great thing. It's just stars. From Ted Cruz. Oh, hello, oh, Mr. Cruz. Uh, Jade, you slipped up with the chat GPT voice uh, and typed died past tense. We all know you're just skinwalking Jim. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. From Jay, Lola's pregnant with our sixth child, 1488. Uh, please, can you let her know that her pregnancy milkers are legit? Well, Lola, uh, Jay appreciates your uh, pregnancy milkers and finds them to be totally legit. <laughs> From Dude Man, here's a link uh, to read a post about Harry's health. Oh, is that the one where they're like, oh, we feel so bad for him. Harry might get upset. <laughs> uh, From Spiss Master, keep Chippy away from bathtubs. Also, we'll put myself into debt to get a hat. Oh, well, everybody loves a good fucking hat. From a brown CPU. Oh, no, I already read that one. Okay, I think I'm caught up on this. Again, you'll have to forgive me. It's just nightmarish. i got to find a way to do this a little better. Uh, Turkey Tom, thanks for the last for the, over the years. From R61425. Also, when are you going to... Uh, when are you doing your deviance on your own fetish like you promised? Oh, well, I never... I did promise that. I guess I'm a filthy liar. From Terminal Coomer, uh, do you have any thoughts on To Call, edgy game that got uh, Twitter angry? I, I've not actually heard of it, to be honest with you. From Hero U 45 don't worry, Jim, Peppa Pipkin is sacrificing small, integer, small innocent children and in satanic rituals to save your life well worth the price. Well, I appreciate the effort. From R61425, again, I used to watch your vids back in middle school in 2014, saved onto my iPod, uh, waiting for first pay, or period. I figured I'd send a buck or two after college and getting my first job. You deserve more than local strip club whores. Even the D DFC ones. Uh, we bought them for Daddy Jim. Okay, I think I'm, I think I'm caught up. I'm, I'm trying to get everything here. This is a fucking long name. Uh, two minutes, five seconds until I enter your butthole sent. Please watch the Jewish guy video being big mad about the street performer Mexican. Say uh, to Serena, please pop a Jim. Are you talking about the trumpet guy? That's a really old video. All right. By the way, I've had this poll up now for seven minutes. For your Terra candle. And, okay, you got two. You, if you combined all the yeses, you've got almost 20%. So you got, you got what, 2,000 votes, 2,200 votes? 20% of that. That's, that's what you're looking at. That's what you're walking away with. So about 2,200. So about 440, 450 people uh, would. So there you go. Hope that helped with your marketing class. You put the little uh, piece of uh, datum into it and uh, whatever paper you're working on. All right. Let me just double check this. And then I will have to load up. I will have to load up. Rama Rama, since I promised that one. From Matthew Harder. Uh, play Moon Cricket's uh, rap, -op rap, -op rap Ocalypse as the outro. I would love to. Uh, it's nine minutes long, but I've already promised Rama Rama. I have to keep my word on that. From David, just started a new job. Thanks for all the laughs. Okay, I think I've actually read these. And then finally from uh, Nicholas, 
Glad I could help. Uh, memoirs of James O'Shag Hennessy. Well, I could. Glad I could help. The memoirs of James O'Shag Hennessy. For my memoirs about bike pups up the ass, I could go for that. All right, let me throw up Ramarana here. One second. Hopefully it's still on YouTube. I don't know. I don't imagine it wouldn't be removed at this point. Okay. Get that queued up. Sorry, chat. Just one second here. All right. Um, if I missed, if the super chat you sent in, a Ko-Fi or a, a Cash App, if I missed that, I'm sorry. I'm a doddering old man. <laughs> it fucks up quite a bit on occasion. Uh, anyway, anyways, for the people that stuck around, I hope you have a good weekend. Uh, you know, enjoy your hobbies. Don't let don't let these uh, petulant, pissy people uh, mess with them. It sounds like Helldivers is good. Forty bucks, pretty cheap. Or go buy a Duterra candle. I don't I don't fucking maybe that'll relax you. I don't know what it smells like. It could smell like shit. I have no clue. Multi level marketing is like Amway. Is that what it is? Oh, it just makes me curious. I'll have to look it up later. And see what see what I've been tricked into. Uh, anyway, for those that stuck around for the chat portion, uh, thanks. Hope you have a good weekend. Uh, I, I guess we'll all see each other on the battlefields of Gamergate. Remember to try to avoid uh, angering H-Bomber guy so he doesn't slaughter us all in our sleep and drink our fucking bloods. Okay? Hide your cats. Don't let Mersh steal them. If you own a horse, don't let Vouch near it. And then, uh, of course, rip, rip, rip in peace, Akira. Uh, it actually is very sad that he's passed. I really, really enjoyed his stuff. And it fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. I don't know what the future of DBZ and other stuff is going to look like without him there to guide it. Man, I hope it doesn't get shit up. But let's let's aim positively. Let's let's hope that it turns out good. Maybe he left behind like a manuscript that said, "Hey, should I ever die, don't fucking ruin my characters." And uh, here's what I want to happen. But then sadly, it turns out what he wants to happen is like Dragon Ball GT Part Two. Goku Boogaloo, and then we're all just sobbing because we can't stop it. But with that, I'm out. Uh, have a good weekend, and we will let Rama Rama take us away. Sleeping, sleeping too much.
Yeah.